पॉइंट इज याद रखना जब तक पेशेंट इज नॉट हैविंग सीवियर साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स और अनटिल एंड अनलेस द सी डी फोर काउट ऑफ द पेशेंट डज नॉट स्टार्ट टू ड्रॉप till that time we can only call the patient as hiv positive but when the patient will start manifesting the signs and symptoms when the patient will start developing the low cd4 count or opportunistic infection that is the time we actually call it as aids because at that time definitely the patient's immune system has been attacked and therefore the cd4 count is dropping therefore it is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome theek okay? hai that is the basic difference now an aids patient presents with fever cough and purulent rusty sputum rusty why because there is presence of some blood over there there is presence of some blood inside the sputum therefore it appears rusty jung laga hua sputum aisa lag raha hai theek hai along with that there is dyspnea what is dyspnea definitely dyspnea is difficulty in breathing okay difficulty in breathing is what is called as dyspnea since two days he is having that means acute onset hai or chronic onset hai bachche acute onset hai to ye ek important kyun hai क्योंकि बस इसके साथ मेरा एक डायग्नोसिस कंप्लीटली रूल आउट हो जाता है दे से देयर इज अक्यूट ऑनसेट ऑफ द डिसीज सिंस टू डेज कौन सा डायग्नोसिस तुम इजीली रूल आउट कर सकते हो शाबाश तो दैट इज व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट अक्यूट ऑनसेट में इतने अक्यूट ऑनसेट में पल्मोनरी ट्यूबर क्लोसिस नेवर डेवलप इट यूजली टेक्स मंथ्स टू डेवलप ठीक है इनक्यूबेशन पीरियड ही ज्यादा है उसका तो माइक्रोबैक्टीरियम माइक्रोबैक्टीरियम ट्यूबोक्लोसिस इज द फर्स्ट वन टू बी रूल्ड आउट फ्रॉम दिस ऑप्शन ड्यू टू द वेरी अक्यूट ऑनसेट ऑफ द डिसीज सेकेंड ऑन ऑस्कल्टेशन दे से क्रेपिटेशन आर हर्ड नाउ वॉट आर क्रेपिटेशन दीज आर रफ साउंड यूजली विच यू हियर ऑन ऑस्कल्टेशन जब स्तो से ऑस्कल्टेट करोगे उसका चेस्ट यू विल बी एबल टू हियर दीज रफ क्रैकलिंग साउंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एस क्रेपिटेशन ओके क्रैकल्स ज्यादा सीवियर टाइप के क्रेपिटेशन होते हैं ओके सो क्रेपिटेशन जो होता है बच्चे क्रेपिटेशन आर हर्ड एंड वॉट डज क्रेपिटेशन टेल यू लंग में क्या भरा हुआ है सी लंग्स आर फिल्ड विद एयर नॉर्मली एंड देर फॉर ऑन ऑस्कल्टेशन विच काइंड ऑफ साउंड इज हर्ड vesicular sounds are heard normally right but yahan pe apart from those vesicular normal sounds of breathing you are able to hear some crepitations why there are crepitations because there is presence of fluid inside the lungs theek hai so crepitations are suggestive of fluid inside the lungs ye yaad rakhna hota hai hamesha to so, jaise hi wo crepitations bol rahe matlab samajh jana hai ki there is some kind of fluid inside the lungs and i hope all of you are quite aware when there is presence of fluid inside the lung that condition can be two things either it can be a case of in lungs hum bol rahe hain not in the pleural cavity so it cannot be pleural effusion theek hai wo baat nahi chal rahi hamari so agar fluids inside the lungs hum bol rahe bachche there can be two reasons for it either it can be a case of pulmonary edema okay or it can be a case of pneumonia there are two conditions that should come to your mind ye dekho breakdown kar raha hu main i am taking this session very patiently reason is i have tried to break down everything possible theek hai तो फ्लूड्स इन द लंग्स इज सजेस्टिव ऑफ टू थिंग्स वन इज डेफिनेटली पल्मोनरी एडिमा हो सकता है पेशेंट में दूसरा निमोनिया हो सकता है पल्मोनरी एडिमा का कॉज क्या होता है यूजुअली द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ पल्मोनरी एडिमा इज नथिंग बट सी एच एफ वॉट इज सी एच एफ कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर जो बहुत ज्यादा ब्लड या वॉल्यूम हो जाता है पेशेंट की बॉडी में एंड इज हार्ट इज नॉट एबल टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दे फॉर द हार्ट फेल्स एंड दैट इज द रीजन वाई द लंग द ब्लड विल कीप ऑन कलेक्टिंग इन साइड द लंग्स ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड जब लंग में ब्लड ज्यादा हो जाता है दे फोर क्या हो जाता है ब्लड पुश होना या फ्लूड पुश होना शुरू होता है वेसल्स के बाहर एंड वो लंग्स के बीच में कलेक्ट होना शुरू होता है दैट इज वॉट इज पल्मोनरी एडिमा वहां पर कोई भी इन्फ्लामेशन या इन्फेक्शन की साइंस होंगी क्या नहीं होंगी ना यहाँ पे कोई इन्फ्लामेशन या इन्फेक्शन की साइंस नहीं होती है देर इज नो इन्फेक्शन बट इन केस ऑफ निमोनिया वी नो निमोनिया इज एक्चुअली अक्यूट इन्फेक्शन ऑफ अ लंग इट सेल्फ इट इज अक्यूट बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन और इट कैन बी एनी टाइप ऑफ इन्फेक्शन ऑफ द लंग इट इज अक्यूट इन ऑनसेट एंड डेफिनेटली यहाँ पे इन्फेक्टिव या इन्फ्लामेटरी साइंस विल डेफिनेटली बी प्रेजेंट ठीक है तो दैट इज द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग वॉट आर द टू क्लासिकल साइंस ऑफ निमोनिया एनी बडी दो चीजें जैसे निमोनिया डायग्नोज होता है ब्रीदिंग डिफिकल्टी उसको क्या बोलते हैं अपन डेस्टनिया एंड डेस्टनिया की वजह से क्या हो सकता है पेशेंट में फास्ट ब्रीदिंग फास्ट एंड रैपिड ब्रीदिंग इज कॉल्ड एज टैकेपनिया जब पेशेंट है ना डीप ब्रीद नहीं कर रहा ऐसे टाइप की ब्रीद कर रहा है जस्ट टू हाइपर वेंटिलेट ओके दैट इज कॉल्ड एज रैपिड एंड शैलो ब्रीदिंग नोन एज टैकेपनिया दैट इज अ वेरी क्लासिकल साइंड ऑफ निमोनिया सेकेंड क्या होती है क्लिनिकली कफ ठीक है सेकंड क्लासिकल साइन ऑफ निमोनिया इज कफ तो कफ एंड टैकेपनिया आर क्लासिकल साइंस ऑफ निमोनिया यूजुअली ठीक है उसके साथ फीवर वगैरह तो ऑब्वियसली हो सकता है ऑल इन्फेक्ट इन्फेक्टिव साइंस विल बी प्रेजेंट इन द पेशेंट ठीक है तो दिस शुड गिव यू हिंट ऑफ निमोनिया समवेयर ब्लड प्रेशर ऑफ द पेशेंट इज अराउंड हंड्रेड बाई सेवेंटी मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्क्यूरी दैट्स एब्सोल्यूटली नॉर्मल रेस्पिरेट पल्स रे पल्स रेट ऑफ द पेशेंट इज वन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन पर मिनट हाउ डज इट एक्सप्लेन इट सेल्फ पेशेंट एज फीवर 
and jab bhi patient mein fever hota hai definitely the patient will have mild tachycardia and that's absolutely normal theek hai to uska ye nahi hai ki patient mein tachy hai aisa kuch hai nahi fever mein hamesha patient tachy mein hota hai to jab bhi tum bhai apne notes daloge tumhe bahut bar jhol karne padte hai to jab jhol karoge to soch samajh ke karna fever dal rahe ho 104 aur pulse rate dikha rahe ho 70 भाई पकड़े जाओगे पहली बार कभी नहीं होता अगर तुम फीवर 104 सौ डाल रहे हो पल्स रेट उसके हिसाब से 125 डालना पड़ेगा प्लीज बी अवेयर ऑफ दैट ठीक है रेस्पिरेटरी रेट ऑफ द पेशेंट विल बी 28 एट ब्रेथ पर मिनट द पेशेंट इज हैविंग फास्ट ब्रीदिंग एज आई टोल्ड यू देर इज टैकेपनिया विच इज सजेस्टिव फ्रॉम दिस ठीक है टैकेपनिया विल बी सजेस्टिव फ्रॉम दिस वन ओके चेस्ट एक्सरे इज गिवन बिलो एंड वॉट डज द चेस्ट एक्सरे शो द चेस्ट एक्सरे शो द क्लासिकल फाइंडिंग नॉर्मली लंग्स is uh, having air inside it and that appears black on x-ray but here you can see the lungs is appearing white some part of the lung is appearing white that means there is presence of fluid inside the lungs that is confirmed and if there is presence of fluid inside the lung on x-ray it is called as consolidation right if the lungs appear white on x-ray that is what is termed as consolidation right due to fluid inside the lungs or due to congestion of the lung the whitish opacity which appears on the lungs is consolidation kaun se lobe mein consolidation dikh raha hai this is a uh, radiology question as a question radiology se aate what is the diagnosis so here they will only ask right middle lobe consolidation that would have been your diagnosis in radiology okay so you have to remember it is the right middle lobe consolidation consolidation which is seen in the patient okay and definitely consolidation is a very classical feature of x ray for pneumonia again okay because pulmonary edema mein patchy infiltrates dikhte hain not consolidation aisa pura ka pura consolidation nahi dikhta याद रखना पल्मनरी एडिमा और निमोनिया में क्या डिफरेंस होगा एक्सरे पे पल्मनरी एडिमा जब होता है तो पाची वाइटिश ओपेसिटीज दिखती है बट निमोनिया जब होता है तो तुम्हें पूरा लोप सफेद दिखता है दैट इज कंसोलिडेशन दैट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस ओके टिपिकल निमोनिया की बात कर रहा हूं ठीक है लोबार निमोनिया चेस्ट एक्सरे की अगर मैं बात करूं वो हो गया विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द मोस्ट लाइकली एटियोलॉजिकल एजेंट दे आर आस्किंग यू द कॉजिटिव एजेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट व्हाट इज द लाइकली एटियोलॉजिकल एजेंट फॉर दिस कंडीशन एनीबॉडी सो now first important is definitely they are saying fever along with cough along with pleural and trusty sputum and dyspnea classical signs of pneumonia theek hai tachypnea bhi ho gaya crepitations bhi ho gaya crepitations are also very classical sign of pneumonia on auscultation theek hai yaad rakhna hai baat next important is chest x ray confirms consolidation that is also in favor of pneumonia so my diagnosis is pneumonia what is the etiology of pneumonia they are asking to me most common cause of pneumonia anybody it is streptococcus pneumonia also known as pneumococcus important is it is the most common cause of pneumonia most common cause of community acquired pneumonia most common cause of round pneumonia most common cause of lobar pneumonia answer is same if they ask you most common cause of pneumonia in a aids patient answer is streptococcus pneumonia reason is yaad rakh lo bachche har patient jo aids ka hota hai it is not necessary that he will develop a pneumocystis gerevesi pneumonia only pneumocystis gerevesi pneumonia is only seen when the cd4 count is below 200 cells per cubic millimeter yahan pe koi bhi cd4 count ka zikr hai kya nahi hai therefore we cannot say it is a case of pneumocystis gerevesi pneumonia theek hai second important thing that you have to remember that in pneumocystis gerevesi pneumonia patient does not develop a typical type of pneumonia patient develops an atypical pneumonia what do i mean by atypical pneumonia सो याद रख लो क्लिनिकल फाइंडिंग्स एंड एक्सरे और द रेडियोलॉजिकल फाइंडिंग्स आर नॉट कंसिस्टेंट विद ईच अदर एक दूसरे के साथ नहीं चल रहे होते इसमें क्या होता है न्यूमोसिस्टिस जर्वेसी के बहुत सारे पेशेंट्स में द पेशेंट माइट हैव साइंस ऑन सिम्टम्स ठीक है बट जो चेस्ट एक्सरे होता है इन अ लॉट ऑफ केसेस इट माइट अपीयर नॉर्मल यस द चेस्ट एक्सरे माइट अपीयर नॉर्मल या फिर उल्टा हो सकता है द चेस्ट एक्सरे अपीयरेंस इज वेरी वेरी डर्टी बट द साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ द पेशेंट आर वेरी वेरी मिनिमल तो इसको बोलते हैं इनकंसिस्टेंसी एक साथ नहीं चलते दोनों मोस्ट लाइकली ये फंडा होता है व्हेन साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स आर मोर प्रोमिनेंट बट चेस्ट एक्सरे इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस ऑफ न्यूमोसिस्टिस जर्वेसी न्यूमोनिया अपीयर्स टू बी नॉर्मल वहां पे कंसोलिडेशन नहीं दिखता है वहां पे इंटरस्टिशियल न्यूमोनिया दिखता है ठीक है नॉट एल्वियोलर न्यूमोनिया दैट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस यहां पे क्लासिकल न्यूमोनिया में टिपिकल न्यूमोनिया में एल्वियोलर के अंदर पानी भरता है बट इन ए टिपिकल न्यूमोनिया एल्वियोलर के बाहर पानी भरता है इंटरस्टिशियम में दैट्स द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ टिपिकल एंड ए टिपिकल न्यूमोनिया देन इफ आई टॉक अबाउट क्लेप्सियोलर न्यूमोनिया आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्वाइट अवेयर दैट क्लेप्सियोलर न्यूमोनिया व्हिच इज देयर इट इज मोर कॉमनली सीन इन इट इज मोर कॉमनली सीन इन मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ न्यूमोनिया एंड अल्कोहलिक पेशेंट इज क्यों वो इंसान नहीं है मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ न्यूमोनिया एंड अल्कोहलिक पेशेंट इज ऑल्सो स्ट्रेप्टोकॉकस न्यूमोनिया मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ न्यूमोनिया एंड अल्कोहलिक पेशेंट व्हेन द पेशेंट इज हैविंग अ रेड करंट जेलीस्प्यूटम व्हेन द पेशेंट इज हैविंग अ 
red current that is the blood stinge sputum is there in the patient along with that the chest x-ray shows classical this sign kya dikh raha hai jo fissure hai wo zyada prominent dikh raha hai na tumhe the fissure is appearing is uh, more prominent over here right this is classically called as which sign the bulging fissure sign this is classically known as the bulging fissure sign so bachche when they say a chronic alcoholic patient presents to you with a red current jelly sputum along with a bulging fissure sign on a chest x-ray these are the two findings along with alcoholism which confirm a case of which pneumonia klebsiella pneumonia it confirms to be a case of klebsiella pneumonia har alcoholic mein klebsiella nahi infect karta that you have to remember no issues with this anybody that's the important thing yahan pe they have not spoken about any red current jelly sputum red current jelly sputum mein sputum contains fresh blood in rusty sputum the blood which is there it is present but in minimal amount thoda sa blood hota hai bahut purana blood hota hai theek hai so that's the important thing so rusty sputum which is there this you have to understand is a more classical feature of pneumococcus or a streptococcus pneumonia okay so it is more classical feature which is seen with pneumococcal pneumonia that is streptococcus pneumonia wala pneumonia that is my that is the reason my answer for this question particularly will be streptococcus pneumonia because streptococcus pneumonia causes typical pneumonia and it causes lobar pneumonia as you can see a specific lobe has been affected second the signs and symptoms in a case of typical or a streptococcal pneumonia will be much more prominent as they are seen in this patient and most common cause agar main dono mein bhi compare karu answer has to be streptococcus pneumonia agar wo cd4 count they would have mentioned if it is less than 200 cells or they would have mentioned ki chest x ray appears to be normal in that condition i would have thought in terms of pneumocystis gervaisii pneumonia koi dikkat nahi hai isme if i talk about the basic classification I'll just go like, for example, pneumonia है. Okay, दोनों में basic difference बता रहा हूँ. It can be a typical pneumonia or it can be an atypical pneumonia. Basic differences between a typical and atypical pneumonia you have to remember. Typical में the signs and symptoms which are there, they are less or more severe. याद रखना in typical pneumonia. Typical क्यों बोला जा रहा है बच्चों इसको? Typical क्यों बोला जा रहा है? The signs and symptoms which are there, they are more severe in a case of typical pneumonia but they may they may be absent or they may be very very mild in a case of atypical pneumonia that is the reason you have to remember atypical pneumonia is also called as a walking pneumonia kyu bolte hai isko walking pneumonia because here the patient comes walking to the opd is not even having a lot of uh, breathlessness or anything like that therefore the patient appears to be normal isliye usko atypical kaha jata hai theek hai if i talk about the chest x ray findings what will happen with the chest x ray findings it will be यहाँ पे तो ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी कंसिस्टेंट विद द साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स मतलब अगर साइंस सिम्टम सीवियर है चेस्ट एक्सरे गंदा होगा अगर वो माइल्ड है चेस्ट एक्सरे नॉर्मल होगा बट यहाँ पे दे विल बी इनकंसिस्टेंट इनकंसिस्टेंट आई टोल्ड यू चेस्ट एक्सरे नॉर्मल भी हो सकता है और बहुत ज्यादा गंदा भी हो सकता है इट डिपेंड्स ठीक है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इफ आई टॉक अबाउट मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ अ टिपिकल निमोनिया वट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ टिपिकल निमोनिया वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इट इज स्ट्रेप्टोकॉकस निमोनिया ऑल्सो नोन एज निमोकॉकस वट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ ए टिपिकल निमोनिया एनीबडी very good the most common cause of atypical pneumonia has to be mycoplasma pneumonia what can be other causes of atypical pneumonia there will be many but some of them you have to remember aage aur ek condition is there pneumonia itna deep mein dero legionella i hope legionella pneumophila you have heard about it it also causes atypical pneumonia you have to remember and it is associated with history of what history of any ship or a cruise or a hotel stay तुम किसी शिप पे रुके थे होटल में रुके थे या क्रूज में रुके थे व्हाई? बिकॉज इट इज एसोसिएटेड और दिस इज दिस ऑर्गेनिज्म इज प्रेजेंट इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द एसी ह्यूमिडिफायर्स इट इज यूजुअली प्रेजेंट इन द एसी ह्यूमिडिफायर्स देयरफॉर if the acs or the humidifiers are not cleaned on a routine basis the patient will be at a higher risk to develop that ghar ke jo ac hote wo to tum clean karte rehte ho but in ships or cruises or in hotels they are not regularly cleaned and that is the reason the patient will have a higher risk of developing legionella pneumonia when the patient has lived on this okay along with that coxella burnett i anybody coxella burnett i causes q fever so that q fever also causes pneumonia and that will be an atypical pneumonia that you have to remember covid 19 तो कोविड नाइनटीन वॉज कॉजिंग ए टिपिकल निमोनिया वाई क्योंकि हम कोविड नाइनटीन में देखते थे दैट द पेशेंट माइट अपियर वेरी वेरी नॉर्मल पेशेंट का जो अपियरेंस था वो बहुत नॉर्मल भी होता था बट जब चेस्ट एक्सरे निकाला जाता था तो डेफिनेटली चेस्ट एक्सरे बहुत सीवियर और गंदा आता था उसका कोराइड स्कोर ऑलमोस्ट बीस के पास आता था बट उसको तो भी सिम्टम्स नहीं डेवलप होते थे ऐसे भी पेशेंट देखे ना बिकॉज इट वॉज अ केस ऑफ ए टिपिकल निमोनिया वायरल निमोनिया जो होते हैं मेनली दे आर ए टिपिकल निमोनिया बैक्टीरियल निमोनिया मेनली 
कैन बी टिपिकल निमोनिया दैट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर ठीक है इवन इन्फ्लुएंजा वायरल निमोनिया अगेन सो इन्फ्लुएंजा और छोटे बच्चों में जो होता है आरएसवी रेस्पिरेटरी सेंसेशियल वायरस दैट इज आल्सो एन एग्जांपल ऑफ ए टिपिकल निमोनिया इटसेल्फ ठीक है दैट इज द इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इन ए टिपिकल निमोनिया इन ए टिपिकल निमोनिया पानी कहां भरता है इन ए टिपिकल निमोनिया द फ्लूइड एक्युमुलेशन अकर्स इन द इंटरस्टिशियम देयर इज फ्लूइड कलेक्शन इन द इंटरस्टिशियम वेयरएज इन टिपिकल निमोनिया द फ्लूइड कलेक्शन अकर्स इन द अल्वियोलर so there is alveoli consolid alveolar consolidation in typical pneumonia but interstitial consolidation in a case of atypical pneumonia theek hai so streptococcus pneumonia i have told you it is the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia it is the most common cause of round pneumonia and it is the most common cause of lobar pneumonia also agar wo copd ke patient mein puchte hai bachche to copd ke patient mein most common cause will remain streptococcus pneumonia but iske alawa what is another cause important copd ke patient mein प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन है ये हीमोफिलस इन्फ्लुएंजा तो हीमोफिलस इन्फ्लुएंजा इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉज ऑफ न्यूमोनिया इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ सीओपीडी आइदर इट कैन बी अ पेशेंट ऑफ एम्फाइसीमा और इट कैन बी अ पेशेंट ऑफ क्रोनिक ब्रोंकाइटिस इन बोथ दिस पेशेंट्स द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज कैन बी हीमोफिलस न्यूमोनिया हीमोफिलस इन्फ्लुएंजा एज़ वेल कोई दिक्कत नहीं है इसमें देन इफ अ पेशेंट वाज हैविंग सीवियर रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस एंड देयरफॉर ही वाज अटैच देयरफॉर ही वाज इंट्यूबेटेड एंड अटैच्ड ऑन अ वेंटिलेटर ट्यूबिंग so this is called as ventilator associated pneumonia ventilator pe start karne ke baad usko 24 ghante ya 48 ghante ke andar andar signs and symptoms develop ho gaye that is a ventilator associated pneumonia what is the most common cause for it the most common cause for a ventilator associated pneumonia can be pseudomonas apart from pseudomonas it can be acinetobacter as well or it can be the third one can be klebsiella these are the three more most common causes for a ventilator associated pneumonia okay pseudomonas acinetobacter and klebsiella okay whereas if patient is having pneumoniac feature he is not on a ventilator but hospital mein admit karne ke baad within 48 hours he has developed uh, signs and symptoms of pneumonia this type of pneumonia is called as hospital acquired pneumonia also known as this is a previous year term which has been used nosocomial pneumonia jo hospital acquired infection hota hai usko bola jata hai nosocomial infection uska agar most common cause pucha jaye then it is then it is staphylococcus aureus hospital acquired pneumonia or nosocomial pneumonia here the patient develops symptoms within 48 hours of hospital admission and the here the most common cause has to be staphylococcus or yes no issues with this anybody that's important ठीक है, so in children also Staphylococcus aureus can be a very common cause of pneumonia and then it can form a pneumatocele. What is pneumatocele? एक फुग्गा, एक बलून बन जाता है बच्चे की लंग के अंदर and that can rupture and that can lead to spontaneous pneumothorax also. This has been a previous year NEET PG question when they gave a classical child who was have suffering from pneumonia and that child developed a pneumatocele balloon inside the lung and that ruptured and the child presented an emergency with the case of spontaneous pneumothorax. ठीक है, so these are the important things that you have to remember about pneumonia. For pneumonia treatment, बच्चे, you have to decide whether you can, whether you have to treat the patient on a OPD basis, IPD basis, or a ICU basis. What is that score used? This is important. Previous year question नहीं है. Curb 65 score. What does the Curb 65 score stands for? C stands for serum. So just one. C stands for confusion. confusion is nothing but suggestive of what confusion is suggestive of what encephalopathy encephalopathy is nothing but brain damage theek hai to confusion drowsiness theek hai ye sab features jo hote hai they are suggestive of brain damage or brain involvement in the patient theek hai u stands for what blood urea nitrogen more than 7 millimoles per liter agar blood urea nitrogen bad raha hai that means the patient's kidney are also getting damaged then r stands for what respiratory rate more than 30 breaths per minute okay respiratory rate more than 30 breaths per minute then b stands for what blood pressure less than 90 mm by mercury 90 by 60 mm of mercury and 65 stands for what 65 stands for age that is age more than equal to 65 years of age theek okay? hai so that is the curb 65 score c stands for confusion b u stands for blood urea nitrogen r stands for respiratory rate more than 30 b stands for blood pressure less than 90 by 60 and c uh, 65 stands for age more than equal to 65 years of age if the score is between 0 to 1 if the score is between 0 to 
क्या करोगे डेफिनेटली यू कैन ट्रीट द पेशेंट ऑन ओपीडी बेसिस इफ द स्कोर इज बिटवीन वन टू टू तो वन पे जो होता है ना वी हैव टू डिसाइड द क्लिनिशियन कैन डिसाइड वेदर टू ट्रीट द पेशेंट ऑन ओपीडी और आईपीडी बेसिस ओके वन टू टू इट इज ट्रीटेड ऑन आईपीडी इन पेशेंट बेसिस एंड इफ द स्कोर इज मोर देन इक्वल टू थ्री देन यू हैव टू एडमिट द पेशेंट इन द आईसीयू डेफिनेट ठीक है सो दैट इज द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग फॉर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ निमोनिया एज वेल वट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर निमोनिया मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस वेरी गुड द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस ऑफ निमोनिया इज अ मैक्रोलाइड नोन एज अज ए थ्रो माइसिन बिकॉज the most common cause of typical pneumonia streptococcus pneumonia as well as the most common cause of atypical pneumonia mycoplasma pneumonia both are effective uh, against both we have a effective drug known as azithromycin therefore overall it is considered as a drug of choice for pneumonia agar listeria cause hai to ampicillin has to be added agar pseudomonas cause hai we can add meropenem or we can add peptas by paracillin plus tazobactam ka combination theek hai so these are the things that you have to remember why pneumonia kyunki pneumonia is a most common hospital acquired infection in patients so agar pneumonia nahi pada matlab actually you will not be able to manage patients theek hai to bhai agar pneumonia ke notes dalne hain pneumonia pata hona chahiye uske bina pneumonia nahi aata question number 2 if i talk about a 50 year old female known case of breast cancer has undergone surgery and took a long flight from new york to delhi and started experiencing severe breathlessness and suddenly collapses at the airport she is rushed to the hospital and chest x ray was done which has been given below lab worker reveals d dimers of this patient are elevated which among the following is the preferred treatment so now let's talk about this sabse pehle she is a elderly female who is presenting to us that's fine she is a known case of breast cancer breast cancer is what a malignancy breast cancer is definitely a malignancy they would have mentioned about a cancer or a malignancy for some other other reason ऐसे ही तो मेंशन नहीं करेंगे बिकॉज इट इज अस्ट फैक्टर व्हाई बिकॉज दिस मैलेग्नेंसी व्हिच इज देयर बच्चे और एनी टाइप ऑफ कैंसर इट इज एक्चुअली अ हाइपर कोएगुलेबल स्टेट इट इज अ हाइपर कोएगुलेबल स्टेट यस द अमाउंट ऑफ क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स यूजुअली इंक्रीजेस इन अ केस ऑफ मैलेग्नेंसी दैट हैज टू बी रिमेंबर्ड इवन प्रेगनेंसी इफ दे मेंशन दैट इज अ हाइपर कोएगुलेबल स्टेट ओके इवन इफ दे मेंशन अ पेशेंट ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम that is also a hyper coagulable state a patient who has been taking ocps for a very long duration of time okay definitely that can induce thromboembolism in a patient a patient who is undergoing hrt hormone replacement therapy that is also a risk factor for the same theek okay? hai so all of these definitely protein c or protein s deficiency okay antithrombin 3 deficiency protein c or protein s ki deficiency antithrombin 3 ki deficiency factor 5 lead in mutation factor 5 lead in mutation all of these are hypercoagulable state wo sab ko use kar sakte hai just to give you a hint ki definitely the patient is having hypercoagulability why because we know bachcho that hypercoagulability which is there it is a important risk factor for the thrombus formation agar thrombus banana hai agar blood vessel mein blockage banana hai thrombus banana hai uske liye three things are important and that is remembered by the virtuo stride of pathology what is the virtuo stride of pathology it says there should be endothelial injury that is the important most important factor second it should say there will be stasis of blood flow blood flow jo hai wo dheema dheema chalna chahiye aur it should be st uh, standing at a point and third important funda is nothing but a hyper coagulable state or a hyper coagulability theek hai these are the three important factors which will induce thrombosis in a patient theek hai ya blockage in a vessel so definitely she is having breast cancer she has undergone surgery and took a long flight from new york to delhi वो न्यूयॉर्क से दिल्ली तक आई है लॉन्ग फ्लाइट लेके दैट मींस फॉर एग्जांपल डेफिनेटली एस शी हैज टेकन अ लॉन्ग फ्लाइट मतलब वो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स क्या रहती बैठी रही और बैठी रही मतलब दैट इज अ रिस्क फैक्टर दैट इज सजेस्टिव ऑफ व्हाट प्रोलॉन्ग्ड इमोबिलाइजेशन अ प्रोलॉन्ग्ड इमोबिलाइजेशन जो होता है द पेशेंट हैज बीन सिटिंग और लाइंग डाउन फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन ऑफ टाइम दैट इज सजेस्टिव ऑफ व्हाट स्टेसिस अगर पेशेंट एक ही जगह बैठा एक ही जगह लेटा है तो डेफिनेटली उसकी मसल्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर रहे के लेके नहीं तो जो लोअर लिम्स के जो वेन्स है उसमें ब्लड उधर ही बहता रहा ठीक है डेफिनेटली देर वॉज स्टेसिस ऑफ ब्लड फ्लो इन द डीप वेन्स ऑफ दिस पेशेंट लेग एंड एज देर वॉज स्टेसिस ऑफ ब्लड फ्लो अलॉन्ग विद हाइपर को एगेलेबल स्टेट वॉज देर रिस्क फॉर थ्रॉम्बोसिस येस देर वॉज अ वेरी हाई रिस्क फॉर थ्रॉम्बोसिस एंड ड्यू टू दैट रीजन ड्यू टू दैट रीजन वॉट इज हैपन इन दिस पेशेंट द पेशेंट इज डेफिनेटली डेवलप्ड वॉट the patient has definitely developed dvt what is dvt deep venous thrombosis theek hai prolonged immobilization kitna 
यूजली अराउंड ट्वेंटी फोर टू सेवेंटी टू आवर्स का प्रोलॉन्ग डिमोबलाइजेशन कैन ऑल्सो भी रिस्क फैक्टर अगर लॉन्ग फ्लाइट की बात करूँ अदरवाइज तो महीनों महीनों का भी प्रोलॉन्ग डिमोबलाइजेशन कैन नॉट लीड इट तो इम्पोर्टेंट प्रोलॉन्ग डिमोबलाइजेशन वो हिस्ट्री किसकी देंगे क्या बोलेंगे आइदर दे विल टेल यू अबाउट अ लॉन्ग फ्लाइट और दे कैन मैंशन यू अबाउट अ बेड रिडन पेशेंट और दे कैन मैंशन यू अबाउट और तो मैं बता था a major surgery like a total knee replacement or a total hip replacement surgery or they can mention about a fracture something like a long bone fracture uh, shaft of femur fracture neck of femur fracture vertebral fractures theek hai in mein prolonged bed rest chahiye hoti hai patient ko so these are the risk factors they will never mention patient is having prolonged immobilization to wo hamesha hint denge kuch na kuch prolonged immobilization to mai diagnose karna hota hai first of all they will give you a hint for sure for a hypercoagulable state second they have to give you a hint for a prolonged immobilization to ye hoga hi hoga please be aware of this fact so definitely the patient has developed dvt and now as the patient has developed deep venous thrombosis there was thrombus or blockage in the deep veins of the leg as soon as the patient got down from the flight the patient ne kya shuru kiya chalna shuru kar diya as soon as the patient started walking the muscles of the leg started contracting and iski wajah se veins compress ho gayi as veins compressed definitely kya ho gaya ye jo thrombus bana tha it got dislodged ye thrombus yahan se alag ho gaya it got separated it went into the small small vessels of your lungs and it has blocked the small vessels of your lung leading to pulmonary embolism in the patient so the provisional diagnosis of this condition has to be a case of pulmonary embolism so the diagnosis in this patient has to be a case of pulmonary embolism you have to remember that now definitely here as they have said the patient was having breathlessness as the lungs vessel lung vessels or the pulmonary vessels are blocked that is the reason patient experiences this breathlessness usually and the patient has also collapsed at the airport if the patient has collapsed why what is the reason for collapse of the patient there is hypotension which is seen in the patient due to a sudden hypotension sudden drop in the blood pressure of this patient the patient usually goes into syncope and due to that syncopal attack the patient collapses at the airport she was rushed to the hospital and chest x ray was done okay chest x ray pe kya dikh raha hai now chest x ray pe can you see definitely this vessel which is there over here this vessel which is there over here kya dikh raha hai is vessel mein this vessel appears to be dilated normally ye itni prominent nahi dikhti yahan pe it appears to be dilated this is the right descending pulmonary artery and when the right descending pulmonary artery appears to be dilated when the right descending pulmonary artery appears to be dilated what is the sign called as this is known as the pallas sign this is the classical pallas sign which will be seen on a chest x ray of a patient in a case of massive pulmonary embolism next important kya dikh raha hai yahan pe what is this feature can you see in this particular area definitely there is a opacity which is seen ye thoda safed safed lag raha area this triangular area why because there is decreased blood flow through this area and this triangular opacity which is formed on a chest x ray of a patient of massive pulmonary embolism kya bolte hai usko a wedge shaped opacity or a triangular opacity hampton hump sign this is the classical hampton hump sign this is the classical hampton hump sign got it there are two signs of massive pulmonary embolism on the chest x ray and the third sign definitely is due to focal oligemia yahan pe nahi dikh rahi wo focal oligemia matlab decreased blood supply to some parts of the lung and that is what is called as the classical westermark sign so three signs are seen on a chest x ray of a patient of pulmonary embolism first is pallas sign second is the hampton hump sign and the third one that you have to remember it is not seen over here i'm saying again it is i'm just writing over here it is known as the westermark sign it is known as the westermark sign theek okay? hai so that's the important thing now definitely once we have made a diagnosis ki it is a case of pulmonary embolism theek hai then definitely uh d dimers bhi dekh liye humne d dimers are elevated why d dimers are seen because d dimers are considered as screening test for a case of pulmonary embolism are the d dimers jab thrombus break hota hai bachche where the thrombus is broken down then a lot of d dimers of fibrin degradation products are released so isiliye jab thrombosis hota hai kisi patient mein wo thrombus ko apni body todne ki koshish karegi isiliye bahut sare d dimers release honge and all the d dimers will be elevated in the blood of the patient therefore d dimers can be used as a screening test for most of the thromboembolism uh, conditions like pulmonary embolism second important if they ask you what is the investigation of choice in this patient first line is always a chest x ray but investigation of choice bole to it is a ct angiography 
right ct angio pulmonary angiography definitely ct angiography is definitely considered as the investigation of choice agar wo gold standard investigation ki baat kare to gold standard investigation ki baat kare to it is pulmonary angiography it is avoided because it is an invasive test theek hai so that's the important thing gold standard is usually not done pulmonary angiography is not commonly recommended for the patient ct angiography is a common technique that is which is used for the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism now once we have done chest x ray okay on that definitely we have got the signs we can even go for a ecg of the patient on which we might be able to see some changes then definitely we'll go for d dimers which will be elevated then we'll confirm the diagnosis with the help of ct angiograph now once we have made the diagnosis it is definitely a case of pulmonary embolism we have to discuss whether it is a case of massive pulmonary embolism or a sub massive pulmonary embolism what will be the basic differences between massive and sub massive in massive pulmonary embolism bachche definitely if i talk about the signs and symptoms in massive pulmonary embolism the patient is going to have breathlessness that is shortness of breath along with that the patient is going to have syncope also the patient can also have syncope due to sudden decrease in the blood pressure but if i talk about a sub massive pulmonary embolism here the patient will only have shortness of breath or breathlessness iske alawa syncopal attack patient mein nahi hota because it is sub massive second important that you have to remember sudden death wagera hai to obviously it is massive again ठीक है नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट अगर मैं चेस्ट एक्सरे की बात करता हूँ डी डायमस तो दोनों में एलिवेटेड होंगे ठीक है इफ आई टॉक अबाउट चेस्ट एक्सरे चेस्ट एक्सरे पे ऑल द साइंस व्हिच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑल के ऑल द साइंस व्हिच आर देयर दे आर ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट इन अ केस ऑफ मैसिव पल्मोनरी एम्बोलिज्म दे आर नॉट प्रेजेंट इन अ केस ऑफ सब मैसिव पल्मोनरी एम्बोलिज्म नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट अ ईसीजी ईसीजी की अगर मैं बात करता हूं इन अ केस ऑफ मैसिव पल्मोनरी एम्बोलिज्म देयर विल बी अ क्लासिकल पैटर्न व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज द S1 Q3 T3 pattern. What is this S1 Q3 T3 pattern? There is a deep S wave in the first lead. There is a deep Q wave in the third lead, and there is an inverted T wave in the third lead. That is classically present in a case of massive pulmonary embolism. But in a sub massive, there will only be sinus tachycardia. In sub massive, there is only going to be sinus tachycardia in the patient. Definitely, no problem. D dimers are elevated in both the conditions usually once you have made the diagnosis whether it is a massive or a sub massive pulmonary embolism then you will talk about the treatment of the patient treatment ki agar main baat karta hu bachche what is the difference in the treatment of both these conditions in a massive pulmonary embolism definitely there is a bigger blockage or a bigger thrombus which is formed i have to break down the thrombus agar main thrombus ko break karta hu usko kya bola jayega thrombo lysis theek hai pehle hum kya karte the we used to give iv alteplase 100 mg directly iv to the patient and uske baad wo thrombus break down hota tha why alteplase alteplase is nothing but a रिकॉम्बिनेंट टिश्यू प्लाज्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर तुम्हारी बॉडी में थ्रोम्बस तोड़ने का काम किसका होता है टिश्यू प्लाज्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर का ओके प्लाज्मिन करता है काम इंपॉर्टेंट इज डेफिनेटली जो तुमने रिकॉम्बिनेंट बनाया इन ड्रग्स का नाम क्या स्ट्रेप्टोकाइनेस यूरोकाइनेस आईटी प्लेस रेटी प्लेस टिनेक्टी प्लेस इंपॉर्टेंट इज स्ट्रेप्टोकाइनेस एंड यूरोकाइनेस आर अवॉइडेड नाउ डेज बिकॉज ऑफ द रिस्क ऑफ एलर्जीज streptokinase is derived from bacteria that is the reason why it is due as avoided nowadays nowadays the drugs which are used is either alteplase or retiplase in the patient pulmonary embolism we commonly use retiplase in the patient and retiplase jo use karte the pehle main directly bola used to give iv to the patient and uske baad dekhte rehte the but uske baad kya hota tha wo jo thrombus thode thode tukdon mein tukdon mein toot gaya na ye chote chote tukde jo hai wo aage jaake aur choti blood vessels ko block kar dete the that was the problem therefore we decided what we decided that it's better to insert a catheter and via that catheter we are going to give alt place in low doses 24 mg dete hai aajkal and we are going to break down that thrombus and jab wo thrombus ko break down karenge definitely then with the help of the same catheter we are going to remove all these <coughs> the broken down pieces of the thrombus so that they will not block the small small blood vessels further theek hai to isko bola jata hai catheter directed thrombolysis in the patient theek hai to aajkal jo massive pulmonary embolism hota hai bachche we are going for a catheter directed thrombolysis for that condition and for that the best drug which is used is definitely iv alteplase okay which is a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator iske sath sath definitely i have to give what i have to give low molecular weight heparin to the patient that is anticoagulation has to be done theek hai iv de do main whereas in a सब मैसिव पल्मोनरी एम्बोलिज्म सब मैसिव में छोटा सा थ्रोम्बस है उसको ब्रेक डाउन करने के लिए तो हम थ्रोम्बोलाइसिस यूज करोगे क्या जरूरत ही नहीं है यू कैन जस्ट गो फॉर एंटी कोएगुलेशन इन दैट पेशेंट यू कैन जस्ट गो फॉर एन एंटी कोएगुलेशन इन दैट पेशेंट दैट इज जस्ट 
low molecular weight heparin can be given to the patient okay and if required warfarin will be started in the patient as well okay warfarin kyu start karte hain because after 5 days when we are going to stop heparin we are going to still continue warfarin for the next span of almost 3 months or at least lifelong for the patient if it is a recurrent episode theek hai isi liye warfarin is started and warfarin first day pe start karna kyu zaruri hai because warfarin has a very slow onset of action it starts to have its action from fifth day onwards isi liye pehle pas din we have to start it on the first day with heparin itself theek hai to ye yaad rakhna so now definitely sabne pulmonary embolism ka diagnosis to kar liya tha okay there was these two things which were responsible for it first hypercoagulable state second prolonged immobilization suggestive of stasis in a patient now which among the following is a preferred treatment our case is a massive or submassive pulmonary embolism massive because we are able to see all the chest x ray signs we are able to see that the patient has collapsed therefore it is a case of massive pulmonary embolism so what is the answer it has to be option b catheter directed thrombolysis has to be done in the patient got it next question if i talk about now if i talk about the next question which states a patient having cld what is cld chronic liver disease that is nothing else but cirrhosis cld likhte wo bar bar exam hai and bacche ye ho jate ye kya baat hai so cld is nothing but chronic liver disease or cirrhosis itself the patient presents to us in the opd with complaints of fever tachypnea and gross abdominal distension see gross abdominal distension pet phool jata hai ek patient ka hai cirrhosis ka uska theek hai that is a classical sign of only ascites gross abdominal distension agar bas hota so i would have said it is only a case of ascites because the patient is a known case of cirrhosis q because i hope all of you are quite aware liver is the factory of your body aur liver ka kaam hota hai majority of your proteins banana so if your liver is damaged bachche will there be formation of proteins no तो तुम्हारे क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स और ऑल्सो प्रोटीन्स सो विल देयर बी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ योर क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स नो विल देयर बी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अनदर प्रोटीन्स नो तो दोनों नहीं बनता तो डेफिनेटली द प्रोटीन्स व्हिच विल बी फॉर्मड इनसाइड द बॉडी दे विल बी वेरी वेरी लेस एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्वाइट अवेयर इनसाइड अ वेसल द प्रोटीन्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट दे आर नोन टू जनरेट अ प्रेशर नोन एज़ प्लाज्मा ऑनकोटिक प्रेशर एंड दैट प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू कीप द फ्लूइड इनसाइड द वेसल प्रोटीन्स की वजह से ये जो फ्लूड है वो वेसल के अंदर रहता है अगर प्रोटीन्स कम हो जाएंगे वो फ्लूड कहा चला जाएगा बाहर चला जाएगा एज देर इज डेफिशियंसी ऑफ प्रोटीन्स द प्लाज्मा ऑनकोटिक प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज एंड ड्यू टू दैट द पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू हैव थर्ड स्पेस कलेक्शन द पेशेंट कैन हैव अ लॉट ऑफ एडिमा द पेशेंट कैन हैव अ लॉट ऑफ असाइटिस इवन प्लोर रिफ्यूजन कैन ऑल्सो डेवलप इन दिस पेशेंट एज वेल ओके सो दैट इज द बेसिक रीजन इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ सिरोसिस व्हाई डज ही डेवलप अ असाइटिस ड्यू टू डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ प्रोटीन्स एंड ड्यू टू डिक्रीज इन द प्लाज्मा ऑनकोटिक प्रेशर ऑन अबडोमिनल एग्जामिनेशन टेंडरनेस इज नोटेड नाउ दिस इज द सेकंड हिंट दैट यू हैव ठीक है टेंडरनेस इज नोटेड टेंडरनेस मतलब पेन ऑन टचिंग जब तुमने उसके अबडोमिन के पल्पेट किया पेन हुआ नॉर्मली इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ असाइटिस शुड देयर बी एनी पेन नो normal ascites ke patient mein it is painless abdominal distension it is never painful yaad rakhna ye baat theek hai to pain along with fever along with tachypnea all of these are signs of infection all of these are signs of infection matlab definitely the patient was having what ascites but now that ascitic fluid which has been there it has got infected it has got infected q normally tumhare intestine mein bacteria hote hai all of you are quite aware of that yes so ab kya hota hai these bacteria which are there they go out from your intestine or from your bowel they go inside this ascitic fluid and they are going to cause infection and this condition when these bacteria go inside the peritoneal fluid and causes infection is a classical diagnosis of anybody sbp that is nothing but spontaneous bacterial peritonitis it is a classical case of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis that you have to remember theek hai so spontaneously there has there is development of infection in the peritoneum of this patient that is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis it is commonly seen in a patient who is suffering from ascites or a common case of cirrhosis usually will develop this theek okay? hai and uh, definitely on ascitic tapping was done which uh, is uh, which was sent for analysis and it reveals the presence of how much 500 polymorphonuclear cells per cubic millimeter now important is polymorphonuclear cells matlab kya न्यूट्रोफिल्स या लिम्फोसाइट्स सो किसका न्यूक्लियस थ्री टू फाइव लोब का होता है न्यूट्रोफिल्स का डेफिनेटली सो दे आर सेइंग पॉलीमोर्फो न्यूक्लियर सेल्स आर एलिवेटेड दैट डेफिनेटली मींस द न्यूट्रोफिल्स आर एलिवेटेड एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्वाइट अवेयर बच्चे इफ दे आर सेइंग इफ मोर देन टू न्यूट्रोफिल्स आर एलिवेटेड इफ देर आर मोर देन टू टू फिफ्टी न्यूट्रोफिल्स 
per cubic millimeter okay if there are more than 250 cells or more than 250 neutrophils per cubic millimeter then definitely that is suggestive of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis this is the diagnostic criteria this is the diagnostic criteria yahan pe to kitna bol rahe ho 500 is it a case of sbp yes definitely it is a confirmed case of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis now because the acidic fluid has been infected now theek hai yaad rakhna hai i hope all of you are quite aware if there are neutrophils that means it is a case of acute infection or chronic infection Neutrophils are suggestive of acute infection. Bacterial, viral, fungal, or parasitic. It is suggestive of acute bacterial infection. Cells, समझ लो बहुत सारी चीजें आसान हो जाएगी. Neutrophils are suggestive of acute bacterial infection. Lymphocytes are suggestive of either chronic bacterial infection or they are suggestive of tuberculosis infection or they are suggestive of viral infection or they are suggestive of fungal infection as well. So lymphocytes almost sub conditions में होते हैं. Parasites, uh, sorry. eosinophils which are there eosinophils are suggestive of two important things one is a parasitic infection second is an allergic condition usually okay so these are the things that you have to be aware of okay and uh, definitely nk cells your natural killer cells they are also suggestive of viral infections okay so ye yaad rakhna hai so yaha pe definitely neutrophils are there that to more than 250 uh, cells per cubic millimeter it is a diagnostic uh, it is diagnosed as a case of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis what is the next best step in the management of this patient So definitely, if it is an infective condition, so we have to give antibiotics to the patient, and the only antibiotic and the option was option B, that is IV ciprofloxacin. I can either give IV ciprofloxacin, I can give ciprofloxacin. Okay, so all of these can be given. Cefepime can also be given fourth generation. Okay, so all of these can be given. Important is option A says large volume paracentesis. What is large volume paracentesis? That is removal of acidic fluid. Tapping जब करते हो या fluid बाहर निकालते हो उसको बोला जाता है parasitosis. Large volume मतलब कितना usually? Maximum fifteen hundred ml, not beyond that. ठीक है maximum fifteen hundred to two thousand ml, not beyond that. इतना fluid निकालोगे तो उसको बोला जाएगा large volume parasitosis. अब तुम इतना fluid बाहर निकालोगे patient के तो definitely क्या हो जाएगा? See, you are removing all the acidic fluid outside and उसके uh, vessels में already क्या नहीं है proteins की कमी है. प्लाज्मा ऑनकोटिक प्रेशर ऑलरेडी क्या है कम है तो इसका लॉजिक समझ लो तुम अगर लार्ज वॉल्यूम पैरासेंटेसिस डायरेक्टली कर दोगे इस पेशेंट में तुम पूरा फ्लूड बाहर निकाल रहे हो अब और क्या होगा और फ्लूड बाहर आता रहेगा तो तुम फ्लूड निकालते जाओ वैसे से और फ्लूड बाहर आता रहेगा एंड द पेशेंट विल लैंड अप इनटू सीवियर डिहाइड्रेशन एंड तुम्हारा पेशेंट डिहाइड्रेशन से मर जाएगा दैट शुड नॉट हैपन देयरफॉर व्हेनेवर यू हैव टू डू अ लार्ज वॉल्यूम पैरासेंटेसिस ऑलवेज ट्राई टू फर्स्ट इंक्रीज द प्लाज्मा ऑनकोटिक प्रेशर बाय गिविंग एल्ब्यूमिन टू द पेशेंट Before the press, which I always give IV salt-free albumin, because albumin may be salt at that. Okay, so that is the reason you have to give IV salt-free albumin to the patient prior to the procedure. Okay, IV salt-free albumin should be given prior to the procedure, and then we have to go for a large volume paracentesis. Other the otherwise the patient will die due to dehydration. Okay, that would have been done if the patient was having which kind of ascites, massive or tense ascites. Okay. अब डेफिनेटली माइल्ड टू मॉडरेट असाइटिस में वी विल नॉट डू लार्ज वॉल्यूम पैरासेंटेसिस आई विल डू टैपिंग बट इट इज नॉट कॉल्ड अ लार्ज वॉल्यूम पैरासेंटेसिस ठीक है लार्ज वॉल्यूम तभी होगा इन अ केस ऑफ मैसिव असाइटिस और इन अ केस ऑफ टेंस असाइटिस यूजुअली अब ये क्या है मैसिव असाइटिस और टेंस असाइटिस दैट कैन बी एलिसिटेड एलिसिटेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ साइंस व्हिच इज अ प्रीवियस ईयर इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ऑफ एफएमजी एज़ वेल एज़ नीट पीजी एग्जामिनेशन ये तीनों साइंस पूछी जा चुकी है द फर्स्ट वन व्हिच इज देयर व्हिच साइन इज बीइंग एलिसिटेड ओवर हियर इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ असाइटिस very good this is the classical this is the classical with sign the puddle sign theek okay? hai the patient is sent into the knee chest position and in the knee chest position we are trying to palpate we are trying to percuss the abdomen of this patient on percussion definitely will get what normally on percussion abdomen ka kaun sa sound aata hai tympanic sound aata hai theek okay? hai and here we will be able to get dullness because there is presence of fluid inside the abdomen so dullness aayega so yaad rakhna yahan pe pura fluid Whenever the patient is sent into the knee chest position, जो पूरा fluid है वो कहाँ जमा हो जाएगा यहाँ पे. So definitely you will be able to have a dullness over here. क्यों? याद रखना puddle sign will be elicited when there is more than 100 mL of acidic fluid in the patient. When there is more than 100 mL of acidic fluid. तो अगर जब acidic fluid कम है, तो normally you will not be able to feel any kind of dullness. But जब when the patient is sent into the knee chest position, then you will be able to appreciate the dullness. Therefore, जब minimal acidity is in patient में, puddle sign is the only sign which is going to be positive in the patient. ठीक है? Next, definitely, if the patient develops massive acidity, या फिर उसके पहले यहाँ पे, 
then when there is more than how much amount of fluid more than 500 ml of fluid then the patient is going to have this sign okay what is this sign called as and e amount of fluid pucha gaya tha in august 2020 examination theek hai what is this this is the classical shifting dullness sign ab shifting dullness mein kya hota hai when the patient is lying supine as you can see jab patient supine hai to fluid dono taraf phaila hua hai the fluid which is there it is divided into both the flanks to isi liye dullness yahan pe bhi aa raha hai aur yahan pe bhi aa raha hai right and beech mein tympani aa rahi hai tumhe but when you ask the patient to go on one position that means when you ask the patient to go on a lateral position to sab fluid kaha jayega ek taraf chala jayega ab definitely fluid ki level is taraf bad gayi hai to definitely pehle jo dullness tha bachche pehle jo dullness tha is side pe tumne mark karke rakha tha wo yahan aa raha tha but ab dullness kaha raha hai definitely aur zyada aage aa raha hai that means this is what is called as a shifting dullness sign so you have to remember this definitely aur yahan pe dullness hi nahi aayega kyunki fluid gayab ho gaya hai yahan se theek hai so this is the classical shifting dullness sign ye pucha jata hai ki shifting dullness sign will be appreciated when how much fluid is present in the abdominal cavity or the peritoneal cavity you have to remember shifting dullness sign is elicited when there is more than 500 ml of fluid in the peritoneal cavity theek hai and it is usually a feature of massive ascites in the patient and lastly massive ascites jab ho jayega bahut zyada fluid bhar jayega to ye sign bhi positive aayegi this is a image which came in the august 2020 examination and what was seen over here you will ask the patient to keep one hand in between and then you are going to palpate the abdomen from both the sides to ek taraf se kya karoge you are going to tap the abdomen or you are going to strike the abdomen from other side definitely you will be able to see there is a fluid thrill which is felt ठीक है ऑन द अदर साइड ऑन द अदर फिंग ऑन द अदर हैंड डेफिनेटली विल बी एबल टू फील दिस फ्लूइड थ्रिल ये कब होगा व्हेन देयर इज टू मच ऑफ फ्लूइड इनसाइड द अबडोमिनल कैविटी व्हेन देयर इज ऑलमोस्ट मोर देन 1000 एमएल ऑफ फ्लूइड तो जब 1000 एमएल से ज्यादा फ्लूइड होता है इन द अबडोमिनल कैविटी देन दिस साइन विल बी पॉजिटिव कॉल्ड एज द फ्लूइड थ्रिल दैट फ्लूइड थ्रिल विल बी पॉजिटिव ठीक है इंपॉर्टेंट दिस दिस इज ऑल द साइंस ऑफ मैसिव असाइटिस तो टेंस असाइटिस में क्या डिफरेंस हो जाता है फिर टेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंट
तो देर इज हाइपर बिलिमिया इन द पेशेंट ठीक है सो लैब वर्कअप में दिख रहा है बिलिमिया येस because they are saying there is elevated total as well as direct bilirubinemia i hope all of you are quite aware that bilirubinemia can be of three types either it can be matlab it can be mainly divided into two types it can be a unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia or it can be a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia theek hai so unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia is due to increase in the levels of unconjugated or indirect bilirubin theek hai unconjugated is due to increase in the levels of conjugated or direct bilirubin theek hai unconjugated kyu hota hai Unconjugated mainly occurs due to prehepatic causes like hemolysis. When there is excess RBC destruction, this RBCs are destroyed. They release a lot of heme, and when this heme is destroyed, that further converts into bilirubin. ठीक है तो hemolysis की वजह से होता है. Unconjugated bilirubinemia का cause क्या हो सकता है? It is due to obstruction in the level of bile ducts. It is at the level of bile ducts there is some obstruction. तो conjugation तो हो चुका है liver से. But the problem is at the level of the bile ducts. There is some obstruction at the level of the bile ducts. That is the reason the patient is developing conjugated hyperbilirubin amia. Or if both of the features are there, that is suggest your hepatic jaundice. That is suggest your hepatic jaundice. That means there is some problem at the level of the liver. ठीक है मतलब अनकॉन्जुगेटेड भी ज्यादा और कॉन्जुगेटेड भी ज्यादा है ठीक है तो इस कंडीशन में लिवर में कोई दिक्कत है क्योंकि कॉन्जुगेशन हो भी रहा है बट अनकॉन्जुगेटेड भी साथ साथ में ज्यादा तो अगर दोनों के फीचर्स दिखते हैं यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर इट इज ड्यू टू समेटिक जॉन्डस इफ ओनली अनकॉन्जुगेटेड इज हाई दट इज हिमोलाइसिस इफ ओनली कॉन्जुगेटेड हाई दैट इज सजेस्ट ऑफ सम बाइल डक्ट प्रॉब्लम बट अगर दोनों हाई है दैट इज सजेस्ट ऑफ सम लिवर प्रॉब्लम दैट इज ड्यू टू हेपैटिक जॉन्डस ठीक है सो दैट इज द इंडिकेशन यहाँ पे कौन सा बिलरबीन ज्यादा बोला उन्होंने Direct bilirubin. Direct का मतलब conjugated bilirubin. That means there is some problem at the level of the bile ducts. There is some problem at the level of the bile ducts that you have to be aware of. ठीक है. Now definitely they are saying that the patient is also having abdominal distension and the patient is also having bone pain. Now definitely pruritus तो समझ में आता है. John uh, bilirubin we know it is a pigment which is a yellow color pigment. और अगर उसकी level ज़्यादा हो जाती है, it is going to cause yellowish discoloration of skin and the uh, tissues. therefore the patient is going to have ictus or jaundice so yellowish discoloration of skin is called as jaundice but yellowish discoloration of sclera of frenulum is what is called as ictus so ictus jo hota hai sabse pehle site kya hoti hai ictus ki what is the first site of ictus it is the frenulum of the tongue followed by sclera frenulum kya hota hai ये जो टंग जिससे अटैच है नीचे दैट इज द फ्रेनुलम दैट इज द फर्स्ट साइड फॉर योर इक्ट्रेस टू अप फॉलोड बाय स्क्लेरा ठीक है स्क्लेरा इज मोर कॉमनली सीन बट फ्रेनुलम इज द फर्स्ट साइड वेयर इक्ट्रेस कैन बी सीन इन द पेशेंट ठीक है प्रूराइटिस इज व्हाट एक्सेसिव इचिंग अब ये एक्सेसिव इचिंग क्यों हो रही है पेशेंट में बिकॉज़ डेफिनेटली देयर आर इंक्रीज लेवल्स ऑफ बाइल सॉल्ट्स इन द पेशेंट्स बॉडी एंड दीस एक्सेस लेवल्स ऑफ बाइल सॉल्ट्स दे आर कॉजिंग एक्सेसिव इचिंग और प्रूराइटिस इन द पेशेंट डेफिनेटली ठीक है बोन पेन क्यों हो रहा है पेशेंट में डेफिनेटली एनीबॉडी I hope all of you are quite aware that bile is responsible for absorption of fat. So if bile is not there, the patient is going to have fat malabsorption. So we see the fat malabsorption. Because just said the patient might have the fat forming bulky, greasy, foul smelling stools. क्या बोलते हैं इसको? That was the previous year question. That is called as steatorrhea. And second, the patient will also develop deficiency of very good fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins like A, D. E K and as the patient develops deficiency of fat vitamin D, therefore the patient starts developing bone pain also. That has to be understood. LFT reveals total and uh, conjugated bilirubin to be high. SGPT and SGOT are normal. What is SGPT? ALT. SG AST. Both are normal. So definitely both are normal. Is it a condition of hepatic jaundice? No, because in hepatic jaundice we know that SGPT and SGOT both the levels would have been very very high. दे आर द मार्कर्स ऑफ लिवर डैमेज जब लिवर डैमेज होता है सिरोसिस कुछ भी होता है कोई भी कंडीशन लिवर में होती है एस जी पी टी एस जी ओ टी लेवल्स एब्सोल्यूटली गोइंग टू बी हाई ठीक है याद रखना एस जी पी टी एस जी ओ टी लेवल्स विल बी नॉर्मल इन केस ऑफ हिमोलाइटिक जॉन्डेस और इन केस ऑफ प्री हेपैटिक जॉन्डेस एंड इट विल ऑल्सो भी नॉर्मल इन केस ऑफ पोस्ट हेपैटिक और केस ऑफ ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव जॉन्डेस ठीक है तो ये याद रखना तो मैं इंपॉर्टेंट इज इन केस ऑफ ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव जॉन्डेस दे विल बी इंक्रीज लेवल्स ऑफ बाइल डक्ट्स के लिए जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट एंजाइम है दैट इज सैप 
serum alkaline phosphatase. If there is any problem at the level of the bile ducts, serum alkaline phosphatase or SAP levels will be highly, highly elevated. Ye tumhara keyword hota hai. Jab SAP wo high bolenge, that is a marker of post-hepatic, obstructive or a conjugated jaundice in the patient. Theek hai? So that has to be understood. Koi dikkat nahi hai isme. Please remember this. Theek hai? Now, definitely SAP is elevated. Prothrombin pro time of the patient is prolonged. Prothrombin time of the patient is prolonged. Prothrombin time. Q prolonged hota hai? Because as I've told you already, liver is responsible for formation of clotting factors. Agar liver damage is patient ki, will there be formation of clotting factors? No. And second reason, yaha pe to liver damage nahi hai. To kyo ho hai? Because these clotting factors are not able to reach the circulation. That is the reason definitely the patient's prothrombin time will be prolonged. And second reason, ab itna saada bile bhar gaya hai patient ke bile, liver ke andar. That this excess bile has started damaging the liver. Take it, excess bile ki wajah se liver damage hona start ho gaya hai. Suna hai na kabhi, biliary cirrhosis. What is that biliary cirrhosis? Biliary cirrhosis is when the bile is not able to flow out of the liver and this excess bile will start damaging the liver. That is a condition known as biliary cirrhosis itself. Hai? And biliary cirrhosis is usually due to obstruction itself. Hai? To yaad hai baat. And why obstruction? Hoga? Because there is some problem at the level of bile duct. Now, your biliary cirrhosis do condition ki se develop hota hai. Either it is a primary biliary cirrhosis or it is a primary sclerosing cholangitis. There are two conditions responsible for it. Ye primary biliary cirrhosis jo hota hai, here what happens? It is an autoimmune condition. That means here there is formation of an antibody called as AMA. What is AMA? Anti-mitochondrial antibody. And this anti-mitochondrial antibody will start damaging the bile ducts. As it will start damaging the bile ducts, the bile ducts are damaged. So as the bile ducts are damaged, will the bile be able to flow out now? No. That is the reason the patient will develop an obstructive kind of a jaundice. Second, in primary sclerosing cholangitis, it is also an autoimmune condition where there is formation of which antibody? p -anka antibody. And these p -anka antibody are going to cause what? sclerosis or fibrosis at the level of the bile duct. Agar bile duct ka fibrosis ho jayega, to bile duct kya ho jayengi? Close ho jayengi. And as the bile ducts will be closed, again the bile will not be able to flow out. Again causing an obstructive or a post-hepatic jaundice in the patient. So both these conditions, this. I hope all of you are quite aware that primary sclerosing cholangitis and Kianka positivity, they are suggestive of some other condition also. Very good. So please remember, primary Sclerosing cholangitis is commonly associated with a patient of ulcerative colitis. So they might give you a history of ulcerative colitis in this patient as well. Okay? That's the important thing. So here, in a case of primary biliary cirrhosis, it is a case of, uh, it is a point of pathology. When we take a liver biopsy or when we take a bile duct biopsy, we'll be able to see granuloma. You'll be able to see granuloma. Okay? That will also be seen, which will not be seen in a case of primary sclerosing cholangitis. Okay? So that is a differentiating feature. So what is here? Which antibodies are positive? Anti-mitochondrial antibody is positive. So it is a case of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. But the problem is at the level of the bile duct. We have understood this. Due to that, the liver has been started damaging. It is a case of biliary cirrhosis. We have also known There are two reasons of biliary cirrhosis. They have already given there is anti-mitochondrial antibody which is positive. So it is nothing else but a diagnosis of primary biliary cirrhosis in the patient. And so, if it is a case of primary biliary cirrhosis, what is the treatment for this patient? The treatment for this patient is arsodeoxycholic acid, ARDCA. Okay, arsodeoxycholic acid is given to the patient. It helps usually in neutralization of the bile. The bile is jamaena, usko excrete out karne mein madad karta hai, arsodeoxycholic acid. Endoscopic dilatation which is there. It is the treatment which is used for PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis. Kyunki yaha pe jo bile ducts hai, unka fibrosis ho chuka hai. And that is the reason the bile ducts are obstructed. So we are going to do an ERCP in this patient and with the help of that ERCP, we are going to dilate these bile ducts of the patient so that the bile can flow out easily. Okay, that is what is done in PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis. No issues with this, anybody? Okay. Question number five now. It states, a boy who is aged 12 years presented to your clinic with several year history of chronically productive cough with associated shortness of breath and there is a foul smelling sputum in the patient. He had been screened for TB with a negative Montox test. This patient has a history of abdominal distension. There is delayed passage of meconium after birth and there is failure to thrive. Which among the following is not appropriate for his management? Ab jo negative hai, I will remove it. It is not a case of abdominal cox. But definitely, okay, it is not a case of abdominal cox. Because when 
abdominal pain vagera hota hai in a country like india one of the common differentials that we think about is also intestinal tv or abdominal cox but it has been ruled out theek hai uh, several year history a patient mein chronically productive cough ki shortness of breath hai foul smelling sputum hai okay along with that now the patient has started developing what abdominal distension also delayed passage of meconium ki history bhi after birth and there is failure to thrive what is failure to thrive delayed passage of meconium and failure to thrive failure to thrive is definitely inability to gain weight bacche ka wazan nahi badh pa raha that is what is failure to thrive and delayed passage of meconium after birth kitna times ke baad meconium is what first stool of the baby if the baby is not able to pass the stools for even 48 hours after birth usko bola jata hai delayed passage of meconium theek hai so that is a important thing that you have to aware uh, that you have to be aware of delayed passage of meconium is when the baby has not passed meconium even after 48 hours of birth there can be one surgical condition responsible for it what is that hirschsprung disease okay hirschsprung disease but hirschsprung disease mein when we do a per digital or a per rectal exam or digital rectal or the per rectal examination of the child immediately the rectum of the child will be stimulated and there will be a gush of meconium which flows out but is bacche mein wo bhi nahi hoga theek hai why because the meconium in this child which is there it is very very hard the meconium in this child which is there it is very very hard so there is a very hard meconium q the amount of fluid inside the meconium is very very less that is the reason the patient is having or the child is having a hard meconium and that is the reason it is not able to flow out in the child okay second definitely due to that as the meconium is not coming out due to that the child is having abdominal distension pet phulta ja raha hai bacche ka now they are also giving a history of some condition related to the lungs chronically productive cough hai shortness of breath and foul smelling sputum hai. what is this suggest you chronically productive cough productive matlab bahut zyada mucus bahut zyada pus hai us pe aur wo foul smelling bhi hai so it is a case of bronchiectasis they are giving you a history of bronchiectasis in the patient now bronchiectasis jo hota hai wo kyu hota hai definitely it is due to irreversible damage and dilatation of upper airway or lower airway upper or lower airway of the अपर एयरवेज ठीक है मेन एयरवेज डैमेज होते हैं ब्रोंकस डैमेज होती है उसमें नॉट द ब्रोंकियोस ब्रोंकियोस जब डैमेज होती है दैट इज एम्फाइसिमा ठीक है इट इज द अपर एयरवेज यूजुअली यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट ठीक है और अपर एयरवेज जो डैमेज होने लग जाते हैं उसमें क्या होता है द म्यूकस व्हिच इज देयर इट कीप्स ऑन कलेक्टिंग इन द ब्रोंकस एंड देयरफॉर इट कीप्स ऑन गेटिंग इंफेक्टेड हमें पता है पानी भी जमा होगा तो वो भी गंदा होता है तो यहां पे तो म्यूकस जमा हो रहा है एंड देयरफॉर इट कीप्स ऑन गेटिंग इंफेक्टेड एंड देयरफॉर द पेशेंट डेवलप्स रिकरेंट लंग इंफेक्शंस और रिकरेंट न्यूमोनिया Finally, there will be damage or dilatation of the whole airways, causing bronchiectasis in the patient. Bronchiectasis ke patient mein there will be classical findings like the patient will have bronchorrhea. What is bronchorrhea? Excessive. Very good. Bronchorrhea is nothing but rhea is leakage usually. So bronchorrhea is nothing but excess amount of sputum production in the patient, and all that sputum which is there, it will be very very foul smelling sputum will be there. Why? Because the patient is having recurrent infection. right due to that there is a very foul smelling sputum which develops in the patient of bronchiectasis and sometimes they can even mention the parrot beak like appearance of the nails what is that parrot beak like appearance of the nails clubbing of the nails okay that will also be an important feature for a diagnosis of bronchiectasis and definitely shortness of breath breathlessness to ye to features honge fever will be a feature but these are the classical features in a case of bronchiectasis so they are also giving you a classical history of bronchiectasis in the patient bachche okay why bronchiectasis because again the mucus which was present inside the lungs that was also very very thick and as there was a very thick mucus inside the lungs as there was a very thick mucus in the lungs therefore it was not able to flow out wo mucus wahi pe wahi jama reh gaya and wo view wahi pe wahi mucus jo jama rehta hai it got infected and jiski wajah se the patient has developed recurrent lung infections finally bronchiectasis as well theek hai to mucus bhi bahut zyada thick tha uske lungs mein ठीक है दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग सो डेफिनेटली इफ दे गिव यू हिस्ट्री ऑफ सम लंग्स एंड मेकोनियम का हिस्ट्री वेयर देयर इज अ थिक म्यूकस इनसाइड द लंग्स एंड हार्ड मेकोनियम दिस इज अ क्लासिकल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ वेरी गुड दिस इज अ क्लासिकल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ अ कंडीशन नोन एज सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस दिस इज अ क्लासिकल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ अ कंडीशन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड अ सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्वाइट अवेयर दैट सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस इज कंडीशन व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज म्यूको विसिडोसिस why it is called as mucoviscidosis that means all the secretions all the mucus of the body it is going to become very very viscid viscid ka matlab kya hota hai thick gaadha har mucus har viscera har secretion gaadha ho jata hai why because there is decrease amount of water there is decrease amount of chloride and there is decrease amount of bicarbonates in the secretion okay there is decrease amount of
वॉटर यूजली इन द सिक्रीशन एंड दिस ऑल क्लोराइड या बाइकार्बोनेट ये कहा चला जाता है फिर अगर सिक्रीशन में कमी है तो कहा चला जाता है पूरा का पूरा इट गोज इन साइड द स्वेट ऑफ द पेशेंट ओके एंड देर फोर एज इट गोज इन साइड द स्वेट ऑफ द पेशेंट इन स्वेट ऑफ द पेशेंट विल बी हाई अमाउंट ऑफ क्लोराइड दे विल बी हाई अमाउंट ऑफ क्लोराइड इन द पेशेंट will be high amount of chloride in the patient you have to remember and yaad rakh lo this high amount of chloride will combine with sodium and it will form sodium chloride and sodium chloride is nothing but salt and that is the reason is bacche ke sweat mein bahut zyada sodium chloride hoga and jab there will be a classical history when the mother kisses the baby the mother tastes him salty that is a classical case salty baby syndrome jisko bolte hain apan okay that is nothing else but cystic fibrosis because over here excess amount of chloride is excreted out in the sweat it combines with sodium it forms salt and therefore the sweat of the baby will be very 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 salty if a mother whenever she kisses the baby the baby is going to taste salty that is a classical history that they give bachche theek hai salty skin will be there in the patient theek hai so that is important to be remembered for for the examination theek hai hint hoti hai wo and important is definitely In this patient, why is there is failure to thrive? Why wasn't he but para patient ka? The secretions of the pancreas will also be very very thick, na? The secretions in the pancreas will also be very very thick. What are the secretions of pancreas? Pancreatic lipase and amylase enzymes. These lipase and amylase enzymes which are there, which are present in the pancreatic secretions, will they be able to come inside the intestine? नहीं क्योंकि ये सिक्रेशन इतने थिक है कि वो पैंक्रेटिक डक के अंदर ही जमा रह जाते हैं तो दे आर नॉट एबल टू कमेंट द इंटेस्टाइन एज लाइफ एज एंड अमाइलेज आर नॉट गोइंग टू कमेंट इन द इंटेस्टाइन विल द फैट्स और कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स भी ब्रोकन डाउन नो सो द फैट्स एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स ऑफ द पेशेंट आर नॉट ब्रोकन डाउन द पेशेंट डेवलप फैट एंड कार्ब माल ऑब्जॉप्शन द पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू डेवलप फैट एंड कार्ब माल ऑब्जॉप्शन ड्यू टू विच अगर वो फैट और कार्ब्स डाइजेस्ट ही नहीं कर पा रहा तो उसका वजन बढ़ेगा क्या नहीं बढ़ेगा दैट इज द रीजन वाई द चाइल्ड इज हैविंग फेलियर टू राइव ठीक है, so that's the important thing. No issues with this anybody, बच्चों. So this is all the features of a case of cystic fibrosis. क्या क्या याद रखना है? Lungs will be affected, causing recurrent infection and bronchiectasis finally. Second, you have to remember the pancreas will be affected. That will cause thick secretions, leading to deficiency of lipase and amylase, causing fat and carbohydrate malabsorption in the patient. Steatorrhea, failure to thrive, and all the deficiency of fat soluble vitamins in the patient. ठीक है? And finally, you have to remember delayed passage of meconium. की classical history होगी बच्चे में. That is the case of cystic fibrosis. If I talk about the cystic fibrosis case, what is the mutation? Very good. The gene mutation which is there in a cystic fibrosis case is there actually a CFTR gene mutation, and the CFTR gene is located on chromosome number. Very good. So it is a chromosome number seven defect. And at which position of the CFTR gene there is a problem? At the five zero eight position. So it is F five zero eight mutation that they call. Okay. So please remember and previous year exam question recent need PG. What is the pattern of inheritance of cystic fibrosis? Very good. It is a condition which is autosomal recessive. मैंने बोला है autosomal recessive usually exams में नहीं आते हैं क्योंकि बहुत सारे diseases autosomal recessive होते हैं. But cystic fibrosis का question आया था. ठीक है. So please remember you have to remember cystic fibrosis is autosomal recessive. CFTR gene mutation on chromosome number seven and F five zero eight position पे there is a problem. ठीक है. No issues with this. Now please tell me. What will be the treatment of this patient? Option A says Iva Captor 150 milligram BD. Is it given? Yes. This is the recent drug which has been appro uh, approved for the treatment of cystic fibrosis and it has shown very good effects. ठीक है. Next important definitely. ये Iva Captor का काम क्या होता है? It increases water inside the secretions. ठीक है. It will stop the reabsorption of water. That is the reason there will be a lot of water inside the secretions. The secretions or the mucus are, is going to become thin. एंड अगर थिन हो जाएगा म्यूकोस कोई प्रॉब्लम रहेगी नहीं ठीक है चेस्ट फिजियोथेरेपी यस रीजन इज यू हैव टू रिमेंबर अगर चेस्ट फिजियोथेरेपी देते हो पेशेंट को डेफिनेटली जितना भी म्यूकोस उसके छाती में या ब्रोंकस में जमाए दैट विल गेट क्लियर्ड ऑफ and the patient will not develop recurrent lung infections or bronchiectasis yaad rakhna chest physiotherapy is a very important thing that we do in bronchiectasis patient and in a patient of cystic fibrosis rather it is also very important after a surgery jab hum surgery mein apne patient ko ward mein rakhte hai ward mein shift karte hai we always make sure agar attendant nahi de raha to we at every round have to give chest physiotherapy to the patient reason is agar uske secretions wahi jama ho gaye physio iske baad surgery ke baad because the patient is not mobilizing ठीक है इसीलिए पेशेंट में क्या हो जाएगा देर विल बी हाई रिस्क ऑफ निमोनिया एंड ब्रॉकेटिस ठीक है दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट नेबुलाइजेशन ऑफ टोब्रामाइसिन यस 
Dobramycin will be given to the patient. The reason is basically what is the reason anybody? This Dobramycin which is there, it is effective against organisms like Pseudomonas. And next is Burkholderia cepacea. Okay, Pseudomonas and Burkholderia cepacea are the two important organisms which are known to cause infections in a patient of cystic fibrosis. ये दो ऑर्गेनिज्म से इस पे नीट पीजी में बर्कोल डेरिया से पेश है एक क्वेश्चन आ चुका है ठीक है अ कॉमन कॉज ऑफ निमोनिया इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस विल बी आंसर वाज बर्कोल डेरिया से पेश या ठीक है तो याद रखना दीस आर द टू इंपोर्टेंट कॉजेस एंड ये जो ऑर्गेनिजम्स होते हैं ये क्या बना लेते हैं अपने आसपास एक बायोफिल्म बना लेते हैं देयरफॉर दे गेट रेजिस्टेंट टू द एंटीबायोटिक्स देयरफॉर दे विल नॉट बी रिस्पोंसिव टू अ लॉट ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स देयरफॉर वी हैव टू गिव एंटीबायोटिक्स लाइक म्यूरोपिनम और टोब्रामाइसिन टू द पेशेंट ठीक है तो इसीलिए टोब्रामाइसिन का नेबुलाइजेशन जरूरी होता है पेशेंट में वीकली इट इज गिवन ठीक है बट आईसीडी ट्यूब इंसर्शन इज यूजुअली डन आइदर इन अ केस ऑफ न्यूमोथोरैक्स और इट इज डन इन अ केस ऑफ प्लूरल एफ्यूजन और इट कैन बी डन इन अ केस ऑफ प्लूरल एम्पायमा यहाँ पे प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट इन द प्लोर ऑफ द पेशेंट यहाँ पे द प्रॉब्लम इज इन साइड द लंग्स ऑफ द पेशेंट और इन साइड द ब्रॉका ऑफ द पेशेंट देर इज नो लॉजिक ऑफ डूइंग आईसीडी ट्यूब इंसर्शन इन दिस पेशेंट नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर व्हाट इज दिस दिस इज अ क्लासिकल पिक्चर ऑफ ब्रॉकेस दिस इज एच आर सी टी चेस्ट विच इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर अ पेशेंट ऑफ ब्रॉकेस बच्चे एंड वॉट इज सीन ऑन दिस ब्रॉकेस वाला एच आर सी टी so you are able to see the classical what is this can you see you are able to see dilated airways these dilated airways looks like tram track and this is the classical tram track appearance which is seen this is the classical tram track appearance which is seen you have to remember tram track appearance is seen in which type of bronchiectasis it is seen in the most common type of bronchiectasis known as cylindrical or the tubular type of bronchiectasis theek hai that is the most common type of bronchiectasis iske alawa baki kya kya develop ho sakta hai If there will be a lot of cavities which will be formed inside the bronch uh, in the bronchuses or inside the lungs, that will give a classical honeycomb or a tree in bud appearance. That will give you a classical honeycomb or a tree in bud appearance. Even on a HRCT, we'll be able to see a classical signet ring appearance. These are all the classical findings on the HRCT chest or a chest X-ray of a patient of bronchiac. ट्रीटमेंट मैंने बता दिया इट विल बी सेम एज सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस चेस्ट फिजियोथेरेपी रेगुलरली शुड बी गिवन टू द पेशेंट नेबुलाइजेशन ऑफ टोब्रामाइसिन शुड बी गिवन टू द पेशेंट वीकली ओके अलोंग विद दैट वी कैन गिव इवन हाइपोटोनिक सलाइन टू द पेशेंट बिकॉज़ दैट इज गोइंग टू डिसॉल्व और दैट इज गोइंग टू थिन आउट द म्यूकस यूजुअली ओके सो दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग कोई दिक्कत नहीं है इसमें क्वेश्चन नंबर 6 नाउ इट स्टेट्स क्लासिकल केस अ 40 ईयर ओल्ड पेशेंट came to the opd with complaints of excessive sleepiness and lethargy all the time lethargy is yes, patient ekdam sust sa pada hua hai theek hai jaise abhi tum log lag rahe ho sab theek hai on physical examination the below depicted clinical features were seen per abdominal examination reveals there is no free fluid inside the abdomen there is no hepatosplenomegaly ab jisne ye no nahi pada pata nahi i am not sure kya mark kiya tum logo ne lab reveals definitely sgot by sgpt ratio of 2. Point. One usually SGPT by SGOT by SGPT ratio or AST by ALT ratio of more than one is suggestive of anybody? Very good. So important is this. Yaad rakhlo if they ask you the most specific test to differentiate between a alcoholic cirrhosis and a non-alcoholic cirrhosis is definitely this SGOT by SGPT ratio. If the SGOT by the SGPT ratio if it is more than one, it is suggestive of. alcoholic hepatitis in the patient it is suggestive of alcoholic liver disease i'll say it can be anything alcoholic cirrhosis bhi ho sakta hai so it is suggestive of alcoholic hepatitis in the patient whereas if the ratio is less than 1 then it is suggestive of non alcoholic conditions then it is suggestive of non alcoholic liver diseases something like viral hepatitis something like non alcoholic steatohepatitis hepatitis non alcoholic fatty liver disease okay multiple conditions theek okay? wilson's disease hemochromatosis baki sab mein the sgot by sgpt ratio will be less than 1 only in alcohol it is usually more than 1 agar if they ask you more specific test for alcoholic liver disease answer has to be sgot by sgpt ratio but agar wo option mein nahi hai then मैं एस टी बाई एल टी रेशियो लिख रहा हूँ वन ऑफ द सेम थिंग ठीक है अगर वो ऑप्शन में नहीं है तो
Android blog. Single best answer will be SGOT. SGOT is very non-specific for liver diseases. Because heart may be aata hai wo, but alcohol ke liye isse better koi nahi hai. So for alcoholic liver diseases, the best one will be SGOT or the AST. Best one is definitely AST by ALT ratio itself. AST by ALT sabse better hoga. Theek hai? So definitely ask the SGOT by SGPT ratio of this patient is more than 2.1. Is it alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Definitely it is a case of alcoholic cirrhosis in the patient. Okay. Along with that, what is the most appropriate management in the patient? So the diagnosis in this patient will be what? So kya dekh hai definitely in the findings? Mein? Please tell me. The sclera appears to be yellow. And this yellow, yellowing discoloration of sclera is nothing but ictus in the patient. That is suggestive of a jaundice. You can see the skin is also appearing yellow in color. Along with that, what is this? There are two things which are seen. First is definitely there is fibrosis of the flexor tendon. That is causing... That is the classical case of Dupuytren's contracture. And along with the Dupuytren's contracture, the patient is having redness of the pumps. That is called as palmar erythema. Yes, sub images, similar kind of images are chuke tumhare exam. Previous year ke images hai sab kuch. Theek hai? To actress, that is such, or jaundice in the patient, along with Dupuytren's contracture and palmar erythema. This was the exact question of August 2020 exam. Theek hai? So important is, these are classical signs of which condition? Alcoholic. Cirrhosis. So my diagnosis has to be a case of alcoholic cirrhosis. Tum bolo ke sir, ascites to hai nahi. Bache, ascites is a complication of cirrhosis. It might appear in the early cases, but it might appear most of the times it appears in the late course of cirrhosis. Immediately nahi develop hoga. Shayad ye patient early stages of cirrhosis mein hai. Isi liye the patient might not have any kind of ascites. Hepatosplenomegaly, again, hepatosplenomegaly is not seen in a case of uh, cirrhosis. Rather, the liver is going to shrink because there will be damage to the liver and finally there will be fibrosis of the liver. This is why liver ke size kam hoti hai cirrhosis mein badhti nahi hai. Theke? So that's the important thing you have to understand. So it is a case of alcoholic cirrhosis. Now if I come to a diagnosis of alcoholic cirrhosis definitely. Okay. So uh, this is suggestive of what anybody? Excessive sleepiness and lethargy. Better would have sleepiness, drowsiness, confusion. They are suggestive of encephalopathy in the patient. That means the liver damage is so much now that it has started causing the brain damage. Q. Because if there is liver damage, definitely there will be excess amount of bilirubin. And this excess amount of bilirubin will start damaging the brain of the patient because it can cross the blood brain barrier. And that is the reason the patient can develop encephalopathy. Any encephalopathy or brain damage due to liver is called as hepatic encephalopathy. Okay, it is a type of metabolic uh, metabolic encephalopathy. When liver damage or kidney damage ki wajah se agar brain damage hota hai, so there is a very classical term which is used that is metabolic encephalopathy, and uska ek very classical finding hota hai. What is that? Very good. That is slapping tremors. What is this slapping tremors called as? Asterixis. ठीक है? तो ये याद रख लेना definitely. Asterixis which are there बच्चे? Asterixis or slapping tremors. They are a very classical finding of metabolic encephalopathy. It can be due to brain or liver damage. Uh, sorry, it is a brain damage due to liver or kidney damage. Very classical finding. But definitely they are saying excessive sleepiness and lethargy. Matlab, the patient is also having brain damage. Chalo. Now what is the most appropriate management in the patient of alcoholic cirrhosis? Steroids are the first line or the mainstay of management in a patient of alcoholic cirrhosis usually. Okay? Therefore, the answer should be tablet prednisolone 34, uh, 32 mg per day for a span of almost 4 weeks. Okay? So, kam se kam itna hi pata hona chahiye tha ki steroids dete hai kyunki baaki koi option steroids tha hi. Okay? So, tablet prednisolone has to be given to the patient 32 mg per day for a span of 4 weeks if a patient has developed alcoholic cirrhosis. Tablet spironolactone kab dete bache? When we have tried ascetic tapping, even after ascetic tapping, the patient is not having decrease in the peritoneal fluid. Okay, abhi bhi ascites hai patient mein. So in that condition, in a case of refractory ascites, okay, in a case of refractory ascites, we have to start spironolactone in a patient. In a case of refractory. But this patient mein ascites hai kya first line? Ascites hai nahi. There is no free fluid in the abdomen. Wo bol directly. There is no ascites in the patient. So how kyu spironolactone denge hum? So, tablet spironolactone 400 to 600 milligrams per day is only given in a case of refractory ascites. What is the side effect of spironolactone? It can cause gynecomastia. 
and therefore if pyrenone lactone cannot be used what is an alternative for that in males a plerinone both are aldosterone antagonist in the patient which can be used okay because aldosterone is known to cause sodium and water retention in the body so already bahut zyada fluid hota in a patient of ascites so that is the reason we don't want more fluid retention that is the reason we have to give aldosterone antagonist so that there will be excess excretion of fluid from the body that is what is done by spironol lactone which is a potassium sparing diuretic an important side effect you have to remember potassium sparing hai. therefore it is going to increase the levels of potassium inside the body causing hyperkalemia that has that also has been a previous year question jab pe hyperkalemia diya tha but history of intake of spironol lactone diya tha patient theek hai no issues with this anybody that's the important iv octreotide is not given in a patient of this condition iv octreotide kab denge in a patient of cirrhosis anybody very good for example one of the complications of a patient of cirrhosis is going to be portal hypertension and jab portal hypertension develop hota hai kitna pressure se zyada hoga usually the normal pressure is around 5 to 8 mm of mercury agar usse zyada hota hai that is considered as a case of portal hypertension if the portal hypertension mein pressure goes beyond 10 mm of mercury the patient is going to develop varices that is mainly in the lower part of the esophagus called as esophageal varices in rectum he is going to develop rectal varices or hemorrhoids and around the umbilicus he is going to develop these varices called as caput medusae these will be the classical features which will be seen along with that portal hypertension ka patient is also going to develop a classical feature of spleno megaly theek hai spleno megaly hogi classical hint hai ye theek hai so the patient can have hemorrhoids also and the patient can have him Sorry, caput medus as well. These are the classical features which are seen in a patient of portal hypertension when the pressure exceeds 10 millimeters of mercury, and when the pressure exceeds 12 millimeters of mercury, that is going to cause bleeding from these dilated esophageal varices, bache. And what is the treatment for this bleeding esophageal varices? So, if they say there is a bleeding esophageal varices in a patient, the pressure will be how much? This question was asked. Bleeding esophageal varices will be seen at a pressure of more than 12 mm of mercury that has to be remembered theek hai and what is the drug of choice for bleeding esophageal varices it has to be iv octreotide in the patient it has to be iv octreotide but agar wo puche best agent kaun sa hai that is sclerosing agent this is terlipressin please remember it is terlipressin which is the best agent which is but problem is terlipressin is not available in india इसीलिए द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी आई वी ऑक्ट्रियो टाइड ठीक है तो टर्ली प्रेसेंट इज नॉट अवेलेबल एवरी वेयर दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम विद दैट इट इज अ वेरी एक्सपेंसिव ड्रग ठीक है तो इसीलिए अदरवाइज द बेस्ट एजेंट इज टर्ली प्रेसेंट ठीक है अगर वो बोलते हैं प्रिवेंशन ऑफ इसोफेजियल वराइसिस के लिए फॉर एग्जांपल तुम्हारा पेशेंट आया तुम्हारे पास ब्लीडिंग इसोफेजियल वराइसिस लेके ओके यू हैव ट्रीटेड ब्लीडिंग इसोफेजियल वराइसिस नाउ यू हैव टू डिस्चार्ज द पेशेंट अगली बार ना हो उसके लिए क्या देते हो वेरी गुड अ बीट नॉन सेलेक्टिव बीटा ब्लॉकर समथिंग लाइक Propanolol is the drug of choice for prevention or prophylaxis of esophageal varices in the patient. वो ये दिक्कत नहीं है. That's the important thing. बाकी surgery में देखेंगे IV octreotide के बाद. ठीक है? No issues with this anybody? Question number seven now. It states that जो a patient presented to the emergency room after a road traffic accident and sustained multiple injuries and was admitted to the ICU. The patient was infused six units. of prbc fact rbc ke 6 units diye gaye to this patient over a span of few hours itself for massive blood loss theek hai the patient now has respiratory distress there is bilateral crepitations which are heard and the chest x ray has been given below the blood pressure of the patient is 100 by 70 mm of mercury and the bnp levels the brain natriuretic peptide levels of the patient were normal what is the likely cause of this condition so important is bachcho definitely as they have said that the patient has sustained multiple injuries jiski wajah se the patient was having massive blood loss uske liye the patient was given 6 units of blood transfusion 6 units of packed rbc itna sara blood agar tum doge ek unit chadhane ke liye kitna time lagta hai usually over 4 hours it is given one unit but yahan pe this 6 units of blood are given over a span of few hours itself that means this is a normal blood transfusion or massive blood transfusion This is definitely a massive blood transfusion protocol which has been initiated in the patient. Massive blood transfusion ke definition kya hai? Either more than four units, either more than four units of PRBC or more than four units of blood over a span of one hour, or 
more than 10 units of brvc or more than 10 units of blood over a span of 24 hours that is whole blood volume is replaced in a span of 24 hours that is what is the definition of massive blood transfusion now the patient had a massive blood transfusion definitely okay jo hint aari apne ko. and due to massive blood transfusion the patient can develop a lot of complication the most common complication after blood transfusion is usually massive bt ke baad Tum itna zada fluid load kar rahe ho patient mein. the patient will go into fluid overload volume overload and due to that his heart will not be able to pump this much amount of fluid the heart will fail and that is what is chf congestive heart failure is the most common complication previously a question here congestive heart failure is the most common complication of massive blood transfusion in a patient okay apart from that the patient can develop hyperkalemia why hyperkalemia there will be excess damage of rbc and when RBC is more damaged, they will release a lot of potassium and that will cause hyperkalemia in the patient and that will land up the patient into arrhythmias as well. Along with that, the patient can develop also hypothermia. Why hypothermia? Normally, the blood is stored at what temperature? Plus 4 degrees Celsius. But usually for that reason, our body temperature is how much? Normally 37.5 degrees Celsius. So definitely a lot of blood hota hai. So we have to warm the blood before transfusion. For that, we have to keep the blood back wrapped in a blanket for minimum span of 30 minutes. Aadhe ghande tak. But when massive blood transfusion, do you have enough time to even warm the blood properly? No. So a lot of times in a massive blood transfusion, what happens? We put cold blood to the patient. Ko. And that is the reason there are very high chances that the patient will land up into hypo thermia during a massive transfusion protocol. Okay? Apart from that, the patient will have hyperkalemia, hota hai, but the rest will be less. There will be hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypophosphatemia in the patient. Okay? After, because these ions are going to bind with the anticoagulants which were present in the blood. Okay? So all of this. Most common cause of death, if you ask, I'm coming to Taekwon Trali, but I'll do this first. Most common cause of death after a massive transfusion has to be DIC. Disseminated intravascular coagulation. What happens? In the patient's blood, mein hundreds or thousands of clots are made. Small, 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 small thrombus are made. Now, if the clots are made, the clots are necessary for two things. One, first of all, why are the clots made? Hypothermia. Ke Please remember, hypothermia ke se, because the clotting factors will be activated at the time and therefore, definitely there will be formation of clots usually. Take a coagulopathy will occur. And jab itne sare clots ban jayenge. Two things are required for clots. One is platelet, second is clotting factor. Ab hundreds and thousands of clots ban to All the platelets of the clotting factors which were available in the blood, all of them are used up. All of them are consumed. Isi liye, now, do we have enough amount of platelets or clotting factors? No. So, this is bleeding of the patient. Ki? Rukti. The bleeding keeps on occurring in the patient. So, or blood loss is in the patient. Mein. So, there is a classical triad which happens in a patient of massive blood transfusion. That is called as a lethal triad. Hypothermia, acidosis and coagulopathy. This will occur in the patient which will cause death of the patient. Okay, this is DIC in the patient. Mein. That is the important thing. Now, important is definitely after all of this, the patient can develop two important complications. One is called as trally, the other called is called as trachoma. Trally is transfusion related acute lung injury. And second is Trallo, uh, TACO, which is called as transfusion associated circulatory or cardiac overload. Important, dono mein basic differences kya hai? C, important is Trally is nothing but a non cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Trally is nothing but a non cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Yaha patient mein pulmonary edema develop hota hai. But is it due to heart failure? No, it is not due to any kind of heart failure. TACO is what on the other hand? TACO is a cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Matlab the patient was having what? CHF. And due to CHF, the patient has developed what? Pulmonary edema. Therefore, this will be called as cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Ab, why in TACO, the patient is having pulmonary edema? So, the heart is having a lot of blood. And therefore, due to exhaustion, it is not able to contract. Agar ye contract nahi karega, will the blood be pushed forward? No. All that blood, first of all, will keep on collecting in the heart. And then all that blood will keep on collecting in the lung vessels. If there is a lot of blood inside the lung vessels, definitely there will be increased pressure inside the pulmonary circulation. Or if in pulmonary circulation or pulmonary vessels, mein blood pressure is increased. So the fluid is going to be kicked outside. And this whole water or fluid will be 
alveoli major mauga and that is going to cause pulmonary edema in a patient therefore in a patient of chf or left ventricular failure the patient develops a pulmonary edema and that is a cardiogenic pulmonary edema now is patient may q develop hota hai because in a patient of trali bache there is actually damage or there is actually inflammation of the pulmonary blood vessels due to the damage due to the pulmonary vessels due to the damage due to the pulmonary vessel there is vasculitis of the pulmonary vessel what is vasculitis inflammation और जब इन्फ्लामेशन होता है आई होप ऑल ऑफ यूर क्वाइट अवेयर द वेसल्स आर गोइंग टू बिकम लीकी दे विल बी इंक्रीज वैस्कुलर परमेबिलिटी और जब ये वेसल्स लीकी हो जाएगी दे आर गोइंग टू पुश आउट द फ्लूड एज दे आर गोइंग टू पुश आउट द फ्लूड क्या हो जाएगा एडिमा कहा होगा ये एडिमा लंग्स के अंदर देर फोर इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज पलमेंट्री एडिमा बट दिस इज द हार्ट इन्वॉल्व हार्ट की कोई भी गलती थी क्या नो हार्ट इज नॉर्मली वर्किंग हार्ट फेलियर इज नॉट देर then also the patient is having pulmonary edema therefore it is a case of non cardiogenic pulmonary edema it was due to damage to the pulmonary vessels theek okay? hai so important is bachche if i talk about differentiation how you are going to differentiate tacho wale patient mein to there will be features of heart failure like the patient is going to have pedal edema the patient might have pleural effusion the patient is going to have ascites the patient is going to have respiratory distress okay and the patient is also going to have puffiness of face ye sab cheeze honge But in a case of trali, nothing else will be present. The patient is only going to have respiratory distress. Okay, the patient is only going to have respiratory distress. Then definitely, in both conditions, I will do chest X-ray. And chest X-ray, which is happening to me, can you see in a case of trali? It is definitely showing me opacities. I have told you, patchy opacities in the lungs are a feature of pulmonary edema. So, this pulmonary edema is here definitely. But can you see the heart size over here? Okay, the cardiac shadow over here appears normal or enlarged? It appears normal. यहाँ पे heart size बड़ी हुई है, नहीं बड़ी हुई। ये जो दिख रहे हैं बच्चे, ये यार, these are opacities. This is not the heart. ठीक है, these are the opacities which are seen. ठीक है, तो the cardiac shadow definitely appears to be absolutely normal. तो अगर मैं cardio thoracic ratio बोलूँ, if I talk about the cardio thoracic ratio in this patient, it will be absolutely normal. But in a case of tacho, can you see the cardiac shadow has been increased? It has been enlarged. Why there is enlargement of the heart? As I have told you, the heart is failed. Therefore, all that blood will keep on collecting inside the heart. And therefore, the size of the heart will keep on increasing. There will be cardiomegaly, and due to that, the cardiothoracic ratio of the patient will be more than 0.5. It will be increased. Okay, it will be increased definitely. That is first difference on a chest X-ray. Baki patchy pulmonary infiltrates will be seen in both the condition. Because pulmonary edema, dono me hota hai. Cause different hai. Cause dekhna hota hai, toh me heart ko dekhna hota hai. Second important is BNP levels. BNP levels are going to give you a hint. BNP is what brain natriuretic peptide. Yaad rakh lo. BNP levels are usually increased in which condition? BNP levels are increased in a case of heart failure, in a case of congestive heart failure. ठीक है? Why? Because the body tries to compensate. इतना ज़्यादा volume हो जाता है कि body tries to secrete BNP so that BNP will cause natriuresis. What is natriuresis? It kicks out the sodium from the body. As it kicks out the sodium, definitely who will follow? Sodium का दोस्त fluid. So therefore, as sodium is kicked out in the urine, so a fluid will also go out in the urine. There will be increased urine output in the patient. That is diuresis will occur, and therefore the amount of volume inside the patient's body is going to decrease. Okay, that is what is important. So your body का normal compensation का तरीका होता है in a patient of heart failure, BNP increase करना. But यहाँ पे heart failure है क्या? Trali में नहीं. BNP levels कैसे होंगे? Absolutely normals. यहाँ पे heart failure है. So BNP levels कैसे होंगी? Dark. Okay. So definitely, यहाँ पे क्या दिया है? BNP levels are absolutely normal, and the chest X-ray पे cardio thoracic ratio is also absolutely normal. So it is a classical case of trali in the patient. It is a classical case of trali in the patient. DIC का case आता, तो DIC में they would have said the patient is having massive bleeding. तुम fluid चढ़ाते जा रहे हो, तुम blood transfuse करते जा रहे हो, तो भी bleeding नहीं रुक रही इस patient की, ठीक है? So that is the classical hint which is given in a patient of DIC. Even after transfusion, the patient continues to bleed. Question number eight, if I talk about a 35-year-old lady, Sarkari question, 35-year-old lady is having complaints of bilateral drooping of eyelids. This is not the image of this particular question. Huh? So bilateral drooping of eyelids on watching television. Q, whenever we use a television, whenever we use phone or laptop, that acts as a trigger factor. And due to that trigger factor, there is actually fatigue or there is weakness of our muscle. ठीक है? जब तुम definitely TV वगैरह देखते हो, तो तुम्हारे muscles fatigue होते हैं. And that is the reason the patient starts having drooping of eyelid. Drooping of eyelid is known as 
टॉसिस एंड टॉसिस इज द क्लासिकल फाइंडिंग ऑफ मसल वीकनेस इन अ पेशेंट ठीक है चुविंग मसल एंड शोल्डर गर्डल वीकनेस इज आल्सो देयर चुविंग मसल का वीकनेस होगा देयरफॉर द पेशेंट विल नॉट बी एबल टू ओपन द माउथ प्रॉपर्ली द पेशेंट विल नॉट बी एबल टू चू थिंग्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट शोल्डर गर्डल का वीकनेस देयरफॉर द पेशेंट इज नॉट एबल टू लिफ्ट द वेट्स यूजुअली ठीक है व्हिच प्रोग्रेसेस थ्रू आउट द डे प्रोग्रेसेस थ्रू आउट द डे मतलब कंडीशन खराब होती है जैसे जैसे दिन प्रोग्रेस होता है ओके द कंडीशन इज गोइंग टू वर्सन टुवर्ड्स द इवनिंग इवनिंग इट विल बी वर्सनिंग in evening that is a classical hint which is given in the patient so the patient complaining of muscle weakness okay which worsens in the evening okay that's the important thing which of the following investigation is going to confirm the diagnosis of this patient sabse pehle diagnosis kya hai so that is a classical case definitely as you can see there is drooping of the eyelids as well okay it is a classical diagnosis of myasthenia gravis now myasthenia gravis is a classical condition due to a defect at the level of the न्यूरोमस्क्यूलर जंक्शन फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज योर न्यूरोन ठीक है दिस इज योर न्यूरोन बच्चे एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट योर मसल ठीक है सो इंपॉर्टेंट इज दिस इज अ मसल दिस इज द न्यूरोन एंड वॉट इज दिस दिस इज द न्यूरो मस्क्यूलर जंक्शन आई होप ऑल ऑफ योर क्वाइट अवेयर यहाँ पे सिग्नल कैसे ट्रांसमिट होता है द न्यूरोन इज गोइंग टू रिलीज वॉट असिटाइल कोलिन and that acetylcholine is going to bind to the acetylcholine receptors and then definitely the signal will be transferred further to the muscle ki tujhe contract karna hai karke but problem in myasthenia gravis is what myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition there is formation of special antibodies and these antibodies are what self destructive antibodies that means they are going to damage these acetylcholine receptors itself as they actually damage these acetylcholine receptors can the acetylcholine now bind no so can the signal go further no can the muscles contract no that is the reason the patient is having muscle weakness usually due to this problem because the acetylcholine receptors have been damaged by these antibodies no issues with this anybody so acetylcholine is very high in the sign in at the neuromuscular junction but it is not able to bind that is the problem in the patient theek hai so now important is in this condition definitely what is the best investigation to confirm the diagnosis what is the answer now option a says anti p anti p slash q voltage gated calcium channel antibodies they are usually seen in a case of very good they are classically seen in a case of lambert eaton syndrome now lambert eaton syndrome is also a muscle weakness wala condition it is commonly associated with which cancer anybody very good it is a paraneoplastic syndrome which is associated with small cell carcinoma of lung if a patient is having small cell carcinoma of lung these malignant cells of small cell carcinoma are going to produce these antibodies known as the p slash q calcium channel calcium channel antibodies usually they are going to damage the presynaptic calcium channels okay jiski wajah se calcium release nahi hoga and jiski wajah se again muscles will not be able to contract and therefore the muscle also uh, in this patient of lambert eaton also the patient is going to suffer from muscle weakness no issues with this anybody that's the important thing now anti acetylcholine receptor antibodies these are definitely seen in a case of myasthenia gravis but you have to remember this is a screening test for a case of myasthenia gravis not a confirmatory or a diagnostic test so in 85% cases of myasthenia gravis definitely we are going to have what 85% cases of myasthenia gravis we are going to have this anti acetylcholine receptor antibody positive but in 10 to 15% cases we can have another antibody is positive without which are those anti mas that is anti muscle specific kinase antibodies will also be positive in the rest 10 to 15% cases so dono mein se kuch bhi ho sakta hai theek hai so that's important now but problem is both of them are screening test antibody titers so you have to confirm the diagnosis confirmation ke liye kya use hoga aur jo adrophonium bola to yaad rakh lo adrophonium test first of all it is not done nowadays adrophonium test ko bola jata hai tensilon test it is not done nowadays it is the last option agar mere paas kuch nahi hoga available to main adrophonium test karunga reason is why iv adrophonium is given which is the shortest acting cholinergic agent theek hai and after this definitely while you are performing the tensilon test if the patient's condition improves if the patient symptoms usually improves agar ye muscle weakness wagera thoda bahut theek ho gaya then i can say it is a case of myasthenia gravis but ye drug dene ke baad agar patient ki condition worsen ho gayi further to It is a case of cholinergic crisis. So just तुम्हारे diagnosis के लिए 
जस्ट तुम्हें देखना है कि पेशेंट की कंडीशन इंप्रूव हो रही है या नहीं तुम पेशेंट को रिस्क में डाल रहे हो कॉनर्जिक क्राइसिस के लिए ये कहा तक जायज है दैट्स द रीजन टेंसिलॉन टेस्ट इज ऑब्सुलीट नॉट यूज नाउ वेज अनलेस एंड अंटिल यू आर बेटर टेस्ट अवेलेबल ये ठीक है तो वो बस थेरोटिकल पर्पस के लिए रह गई है फार्मा वाले ट्रीटमेंट नहीं करते तो याद रख लो ट्रीटमेंट मेडिसिन वाले करते हैं एंड मेडिसिन वालों के अकॉर्डिंग हैरिसन क्लियरली सेज इट इज सिंगल फाइबर ईएमजी क्योंकि तुम्हें मसल में एक्शन पोटेंशियल जा रहा है क्या तुम्हारा नहीं तो अगर मैं मसल में एक्शन पोटेंशियल नहीं जा रहा तो एनी इलेक्ट्रिकल एक्टिविटी विल इट बी सीन इन मसल नो दे विल बी डिक्रीज एक्शन पोटेंशियल और डिक्रीज इलेक्ट्रिकल एक्टिविटी इन द मसल दैट इज द रीजन सिंगल फाइबर ईएमजी सिंगल फाइबर इलेक्ट्रोमायोग्राफी is considered as the investigation of choice for myasthenia gravis it is considered as the investigation of choice for myasthenia gravis nowadays koi dikkat nahi hai isme that has to be remembered bachcho if i ask you what is the drug of choice for myasthenia definitely we can give any cholinergic drug but the best one has to be a longest acting one and that is pyridostigmine usually if that is not an option then i can even mark it as fizostigmine neostigmine wagera but the best one has to be pyridostigmine okay that is important next important is if i ask you if i do a repetitive nerve stimulation repetitive nerve stimulation pe if i have a decremental response that is a diagnosis of myasthenia gravis but on a repetitive nerve stimulation i have a incremental response that is a case of lambert eaton syndrome repetitive nerve stimulation pe agar <clears throat> activity jo hai ya response jo hai wo kam ho jata hai that is myasthenia gravis बट अगर रेपिटेटिव नर्व स्टिमुलेशन करने की वजह से एक्टिविटी बढ़ जाती है या एक्शन पोटेंशियल बढ़ जाता है दैट इज द केस ऑफ लैम्बर्ट इटन सिंड्रोम तो ये टेस्ट यूज होती है टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन माइस्थीनिया एंड लैम्बर्ट इटन नो इश्यूज विद दिस एनी बडी दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू प्रिमेंबर ठीक है दैट वाज ऑल अबाउट योर माइस्थीनिया माइस्थीनिया इज व्हिच टाइप ऑफ हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी बेटर आंसर विल बी टाइप 5 नई ऑप्शन में हो तो टाइप 2 हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी दो कंडीशन जहां पे टाइप 5 शुड बी मार्क इफ इट इज एन ऑप्शन एज द फर्स्ट चॉइस वन इज माइस्थीनिया ग्रेविस एंड सेकंड इज Good pasture syndrome. Two conditions where you have to mark it as the first line. Question number nine, bacho. A known epileptic patient who is non-compliant is having seizures for the past ten minutes. Okay, if a patient is having seizures for a span of more than five minutes, it is called as GCSE. What is GCSE? Generalized convulsive status epilepticus. ठीक है जनरलाइज्ड कन्वर्जिव स्टेटस एपिलेप्टिकस बोला जाता है इस कंडीशन को व्हेन अ पेशेंट हैज कन्वर्जेंस और सीजर्स लास्टिंग फॉर मोर देन 5 मिनट्स सो द पेशेंट इज इन जीसीएसई आईवी एक्सेस ऑफ दिस पेशेंट कुड नॉट बी ऑब्टेन ऑब्वियसली पेशेंट सीजर्स में कन्वर्जेंस हो रही है देयर इज जर्किंग मोमेंट ऑफ ऑल द फोर लिम्स इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू ऑब्टेन एन आईवी एक्सेस ऑफ दिस पेशेंट ठीक है सो आईवी एक्सेस ऑफ दिस पेशेंट कुड नॉट बी ऑब्टेन व्हिच मेडिकेशन विल बी मोस्ट सूटेबल टू एडमिनिस्टर एट द स्टेज इन द पेशेंट सीजर हम्म हम्म क्या क्या वेरी गुड इंपॉर्टेंट इज ऑप्शन ए से सोडियम वेलप्रोइट इंपॉर्टेंट सोडियम वेलप्रोइट इज डेफिनेटली वी नो इट इज द बेस्ट एंटी एपिलेप्टिक ड्रग विच इज अवेलेबल इट इज कंसिडर्ड एज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर मेजोरिटी ऑफ द एपिलेप्सिस और सीजर इट इज कंसिडर्ड एज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर जी टी सी एस जनरलाइज टोनिक लोनिक सीजर इट इज कंसिडर्ड एज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ए टोनिक सीजर ए टोनिक मतलब देर इज लॉस ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस फॉर वन टू टू सेकेंड देर इज लॉस ऑफ मसल टोन और पोस्टरल टोन फॉर वन टू टू सेकेंड and there is a head nodding or head dropping moment theek hai isko bola jata hai atonic seizures achanak se muscle ki tone kam ho jati hai next myoclonic seizures myoclonic for example mere puri body nahi but some group of muscles are having spasm and due to that definitely i am having the jerky movements in particular limb itself that is what is called as myoclonic jerks or myoclonic seizures theek hai usme bhi drug of choice is sodium valproate itself even in a case of absence seizures even in a case of absence seizures drug of choice will be sodium valproate more than 4 years of age in smaller child we try to avoid sodium valproate due to the risk associated with it for a child of absence seizures bachche less than 4 years of age what is the drug of choice very good it is a transient calcium channel blocker which will act in the brain of the patient and that is nothing but a drug known as ethosuximide it is a ccb okay it is ethosuximide सोडियम वेलप्रोइट का मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन क्या है इट विल ब्लॉक ऑल द चैनल्स बट मेन एक्शन इज सोडियम ब्लॉकिंग इट सेल्फ ठीक है मेन एक्शन इज सोडियम ब्लॉकिंग इट सेल्फ ठीक है दैट इज सोडियम वेलप्रोइट बट प्रॉब्लम इज सोडियम वेलप्रोइट टेक्स टाइम टू एक्ट 
it is not a drug of choice in emergency for a patient it will take time to act therefore sodium valproate cannot be given for emergency condition it is used in maintenance for epilepsy or seizures levetiracetam again levetiracetam which is there but it can be used for gtcs of a patient or it can be used for even focal seizures of a patient and rather we have to remember that this levetiracetam which is there it blocks the synaptic vesicular protein type 2 but this levetiracetam is the safest anti-epileptic drug. It is the safest anti-epileptic drug that you have to remember. Even better than lamotrigine. Okay, lamotrigine is at least associated with the risk of Steven Johnson syndrome. Peeling of skin. Hota hai. But this is not even associated with that. The safest anti-epileptic anti drug has to be levera or levetiracetam. This can be given in emergency. Problem is, levera also has to be given IV. IV access hai patient with tumhare? Nahi hai. That is the reason levetiracetam can be ruled out from this option. Now we are left with midazolam and lorazepam. Usually, if a patient comes to us in emergency with the help of, uh, with the case of seizures, my first option would have been lorazepam. But the problem is, lorazepam is a benzodiazepine which has to be given and this is only given IV in a patient. Okay, IV form of lorazepam is available. Nasal or uh, inhalational forms which are there of lorazepam are not commonly available and they're not effective as well. Okay? So IV lorazepam which is there, it is given. IV access could not be obtained in your patient. Therefore, you have to give intranasal or inhalational midazolam to the patient. Midaz can be given both ways. Midaz can be given IV. Midaz can be given inhalational also. But as patients IV access could not be obtained, it is midazolam which, has, which should be given to this patient. No issues with this anybody? That has to be your answer. Important agar mein baat karta hon, various type of seizures ki. If the child who is a neonate who comes to me, what is the most common type of neonatal seizures bache? Then no most common cause of type of neonatal seizures are the subtle seizures. What is the most common cause of subtle seizures? Very good. The most common cause of subtle seizures is HIE. What is HIE? Hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. If that is not an option then? Hypoglycemia is the second most common cause of neonatal seizures. And what is the drug of choice for these neonatal seizures? Very good. It is a barbiturate known as phenobarbitone. The first month of life, mein, jiske naam mein one aata hai, wo drug use hoti hai, that is phenobarbitone. No issues with this anybody. Next is, if I talk about an infant who is less than one year of age. And this patient is actually having weakness of the trunk muscles usually. And therefore, this child might having these these child might be having these kind of seizures. What are these? These are the classical salam seizures, also known as infantile spasms. So, these infantile spasms or salam seizures will be seen in a child. Ye kaun se syndrome mein dikhta hai, bacho? Kis mein? West syndrome, achha. Very good. These are classically seen in a case of West syndrome. Theek hai? Important is, what is the drug of choice for this condition? Here, definitely, the drug of choice is injection of ACTH, that is adrenocorticotrophic hormone. If salam seizures or infantile spasms are associated with tuberous sclerosis, us patient mein ho rahe, then the drug of choice has to be Vigabatrin. Then your answer has to be Vigabatrin in that condition. Hai? And if I talk about EEG in a patient of infantile spasm, what is the classical finding on EEG of this patient? There is a grossly chaotic pattern. What is this grossly chaotic pattern? Chaotic matlab? That is a grossly chaotic pattern. You are not able to make out anything. That is what is called as hips arrhythmia, which is a classical feature on the EEG of an infantile spasms ka case. Hai, if an adolescent comes to you, pehle uske school age wala tha, bata do. school age wala, 4 to 10 year old child comes to you and his mother gives a classical history. The child is having vacant stairs. The child is having vacant stare. Vacant stare matlab, 10 se 20 second ke liye, there is no loss of consciousness over here. Only the child is vacantly staring at a point. And after 10, 20 seconds, 10 to 20 seconds, the child becomes absolutely normal. The child becomes absolutely normal. There is no confusion in the child. Hai, in child, in bachcho ko commonly bola jata hai, daydreamers. These child is commonly termed as daydreamers. Hai. This is the classical finding of absence seizures. I hope all of you are quite of absence. There are two types of absence seizures. Typical or Eight typical absence seizures. Okay. Typical absence seizures which are there definitely. Is me EEG pe kya dikta hai? 
डेफिनेटली देर इज अग हर्ट स्पाइक मतलब एक सेकंड में तीन स्पाइक्स दिखेंगे तुम्हें एंड देन देर इज अ स्लो वेव अगेन एक सेकंड में अगेन तीन स्पाइक्स अगेन देर इज अ स्लो वेव तो देर इज अ थ्री हर्ट स्पाइक एंड अ स्लो वेव पैटर्न देर इज थ्री हर्ट स्पाइक एंड अ स्लो वेव पैटर्न विच इज सीन ऑन ई जी ऑफ अ टिपिकल एबसेंस सीजर वाला पेशेंट ए टिपिकल एबसेंस वाले पेशेंट में क्या दिखेगा लेस देन टू पॉइंट फाइव हर्ट वेव लेस देन टू पॉइंट फाइव हर्ट स्पाइक ओके यूजुअली दो वेव्स दिखती है या दो स्पाइक्स दिखती है देन देर इज अ स्लो वेव विच इज सीन ठीक है सो लेस देन टू पॉइंट फाइव हर्ट स्पाइक एंड अ स्लो वेव पैटर्न इज सीन इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ ए टिपिकल एबसेंस नो इश्यूज विद एनीबडी I have already told you the drug of choice for absence is just child more than four years of age sodium valproate child less than four years of age etho succi mide in the patient. कोई दिक्कत नहीं है इसमें and lastly if I talk about your child who comes to me is an adolescent, ten to nineteen years of age, and mother gives you a classical history. कि early morning में the child drops the tiffin from hand. Okay, the child starts having these kind of abnormal movements in early in the morning. What are these called as early morning? jogs what is this condition the child starts having early morning jogs this is a classical case of which syndrome jans syndrome this is a classical case of jans syndrome also known as juvenile myoclonic epilepsy what is the drug of choice for this sodium valproate again sorry it is again sodium valproate itself theek hai so these are the important things that you have to remember about seizures yeah all types of seizures mostly that are important for you focal seizures ke bare mein aage baat karta hu next important question number 2010 now an 85 year old ha bolo diazepam diya hota to diazepam would have been my first choice but important is adults mein agar bolte hai wo theek hai yahan pe unhone age group nahi mention kiya adults mein jo agar mention karte hai to rectal diazepam ki jagah we prefer using intranasal midazolam tha tha ठीक है क्योंकि रेक्टल में डायजेपाम जो होता है वो ज्यादा अनकंफर्टिंग होता है इन अडल्ट पेशेंट बच्चे में होता माय रेक्टल डायजेपाम वुड हैव बीन माय फर्स्ट चॉइस ठीक है अडल्ट में है इसीलिए हम कॉमनली यूज करते हैं इंटरनेशनल मेडाजोल ठीक है दैट्स हां तो डायजेपाम इज द फर्स्ट चॉइस बट अगर मेडाजोल इंटरनेशनली ऑप्शन में है तो अडल्ट के लिए वो प्रेफर करते हैं बच्चे के लिए रेक्टल डायजेपाम इज ऑलवेज द बेटर चॉइस हम्म आईवी अगर होता तो लोरेजेपाम वुड हैव बीन माय फर्स्ट चॉइस क्योंकि वो मोस्ट इफेक्टिव है सब में ठीक है सो दैट्स इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर 10 सेज एन 85 ईयर ओल्ड हाइपरटेंसिव मैन प्रेजेंट्स विद सडन ऑनसेट सीवियर हेडेक एंड ही हैज वोमिटेड ऑन टू ओकेजंस सिंस द हेडेक बिगन ही आल्सो कंप्लेंस ऑफ लॉस ऑफ विजन इन द बायलैटरल टेम्पोरल फील्ड्स इफ देयर इज लॉस ऑफ विजन इन द बायलैटरल टेम्पोरल फील्ड्स सब कॉफ तो हो चुका है व्हाट इज दिस कॉल्ड एज दिस इज अ क्लासिकल केस ऑफ by temporal hemianopia and i hope all of you are quite aware by temporal hemianopia is due to compression of nasal fibers or uh, temporal fibers nasal fibers and what is the site where both the nasal fibers can get compressed optic chiasma so definitely here there is a compression of optic chiasma due to which the patient is having by temporal hemianopia so uski history di hui hai along with that the patient is having sudden onset severe headache and vomiting as well theek hai on examination definitely the gcs of the patient appears to be normal it is 15 by 15 neck stiffness is noted in the patient neck stiffness is usually suggestive of what neck stiffness is suggestive of meningeal irritation not suggestive only of meningitis okay it can be seen in two condition either it can be seen in a case of meningitis or it can be seen in a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage so important is headache will be a common feature for both the condition theek hai next stiffness will be common feature for both the condition but what is the differentiating feature bachcho for meningitis it has to be a case of fever triad of meningitis teesra feature fever hota hai or in a case of sub subarachnoid hemorrhage there will be no history of fever in the patient second important in a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage what is the most common cause trauma most common cause is usually trauma but the second most common cause is what spontaneous rupture of perianeurysm spontaneous rupture of perianeurysm is the second most common cause perianeurysms are not but the small small aneurysms which are found in the circle of villus and when they are going to undergo rupture bachche they will be bleeding in the subarachnoid space and there will be mixing of csf and blood theek hai to isiliye in a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage jo ncct hota hai How it will appear? Normally, blood appears white or black on a CT. 
white that is called as hyperdensity theek hai and as the blood appears white on a ct as you can see normally ventricles mein kya hota hai csf which appears black but yahan pe csf ke sath kya kya present hai blood be present therefore the ventricles are not appearing black ventricles are appearing white in color so you have to remember jab there is opacity when there is opacity or hyperdensity in the ventricles of the patient brain ventricles or in the sylvian fissure of the patient that is a classical diagnosis of subarachnoid hemorrhage in the patient right that's the important thing chalo important is definitely you have to remember in a subarachnoid hemorrhage wala patient this headache which is there it is a very classically described headache sudden severe excruciating headache which does not even stop on analgesics what is that called as worst headache of my life or a thunder clap headache that is a very classical feature of sah in the patient theek okay? hai so that is important so now definitely yaad rakhna spontaneous rupture of baryonyrhythms has occurred this uh, baryonyrhythms which are seen they are commonly seen in which vessels circle of villus circle of villus mein exactly kahan pe more commonly very very good commonly in the anterior communicating artery and i hope all of you are quite aware this anterior communicating artery lies in close relation to the optic chiasma so if there is any aneurysm from the anterior communicating artery can it compress the optic chiasma yes and due to that reason the patient is going to develop by temporal hemianopia when off time i bataya tha three important causes for optic uh, compression of optic chiasma you have to remember one the most common being pituitary adenoma more commonly a prolactinoma second is a most common benign tumor benign brain tumor in children craniopharyngioma and third important is a aneurysm arising from the anterior communicating artery theek okay? hai so more likely there is no history of trauma the patient is having severe headache vomiting without fever and important is there is loss of vision in both the temporal fields causing by temporal hemianopia due to compression of optic chiasma and along with neck stiffness it has to be a classical case of what meningitis or sh it is a classical case of subarachnoid hemorrhage in the patient so this is a recent neat pg question uh, sorry a recent fmg question theek hai मैंने बस बाय टेम्पोरल हेमिनोपिया ज्यादा ऐड कर दिया बाकी यही क्लासिकल केस तुम्हारे एग्जाम में आ चुका है इंपॉर्टेंट इज व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ दिस पेशेंट सो डेफिनेटली यहां पे मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज ट्रॉमा बट एज ट्रॉमा नहीं है सो वी हैव टू सस्पेक्ट व्हाट इट इज मोर लाइकली ड्यू टू स्पॉन्टेनियस रपचर ऑफ अ बेरी एन्यूरिज्म एंड दैट इज द रीजन वी हैव टू गो फॉर एन एंजियोग्राफी ऑफ एन्यूरिज्म फॉर द पेशेंट ठीक है लंबा पंक्चर आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्वाइट अवेयर लंबा पंक्चर इज एब्सोल्युटली कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड इन अ केस ऑफ एक्टिव ब्लीड अगर एक्टिव ब्लीड हो रहा हो इट इज एब्सोल्युटली कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड क्यों अगर तुम लंबा पंक्चर कर दोगे डेफिनेटली द इंट्राक्रीनियल प्रेशर ऑफ द पेशेंट इज सडनली गोइंग टू डिक्रीज एंड एज देर इज सडन डिक्रीज इन द प्रेशर देर विल बी हाई रिस्क ऑफ अंकल हर्नियशन दैट इज वाई लंबा पंक्चर एब्सोल्युटली कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड ड्यूरिंग एक्टिव ब्लीडिंग आई वी मैनिटॉल अगेन एब्सोल्युटली कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड ड्यूरिंग एक्टिव सेरिब्रल हिमरेज Okay, it is absolutely contraindicated in the case of active cerebral hemorrhage in the patient. Okay, urgent surgical intervention will be decided if it is required based on the angiography. So, first, do angiography. Do okay. If you, if the angiography says the surgical intervention is necessary, we will go for surgical intervention. If surgical intervention is not necessary, then what is the drug of choice? Very good. Then the drug of choice is IV nimodipine, which has to be given to the patient in non-surgical management or conservative management of SAH. No issues with this anybody that has to be remembered. Important is what is this NCCT showing what which kind of opacity by convex opacity lens shaped opacity. Idli just said the clear na so by convex lens shaped opacity. This is a classical case of EDH extra dural hemorrhage. Here most common vessel to bleed is which one, bache? It is a middle meningeal artery. What is the surgical landmark for middle meningeal artery? It is definitely the tereon. So if for example What is the investigation of choice for any kind of head injury or intracranial hemorrhage? NCCT head. Just pe tumhe ye hematoma dikhega. But in case you're not having NCCT available, okay, and you suspect it is a case of EDH, and for that reason you have to go for a bore hole surgery. What will be the surgical landmark used? Tereon. ठीक है तो याद रख लो in that condition tereon pe hole banaya jayega if you do not have a NCCT available in your hospital if you're posted in the periphery. ठीक है so that's the important thing. No issues with this. EDH when there is a classical feature when after the trauma the patient gets unconscious he regains consciousness for some time and again becomes unconscious what is that called as that is a classical feature of lucid interval in the patient no issues with this treatment for this patient is nothing but if it is a large hematoma i have to go for a craniotomy but if it is a small one i can go for a 
बर होल सर्जरी इन द पेशेंट ठीक है दिस इज वॉट एक तरफ से कॉन्केव एक तरफ से कॉन्वेक्स तो दिस इज अव और कॉन्वेक्स ओपैसिटी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज क्रिसेंट्रिक और हाफ मून शेप्ड ओपैसिटी और मेनेस्कस ओपैसिटी यू कैन कॉल इट दिस इज अ क्लासिकल केस ऑफ एस डी एच सब ड्यूरल हिमोरेज सब ड्यूरल हिमोरेज इज मोर कॉमनली सीन इन विच एज ग्रुप पेशेंट आइर एल्डरली और चिल्ड्रेन मोर कॉमनली इन एल्डरली पेशेंट आफ्टर अ ट्राइवियल ट्रॉमा वट डू आई मीन बाई ट्राइवियल ट्रॉमा A fall in bathroom is a classical case. ठीक है, trivial trauma, significant नहीं, R T A वगैरह के केस नहीं आएगा ये. Fall in bathroom eight days back. Now the patient comes to the O P D with complaints of headache. That is a classical case of subdural hemorrhage in a patient. Okay, so that's the important thing. Subdural hemorrhage में what is the most common artery to bleed? Or the most common vessel to bleed? It is the only venous hemorrhage. That is cortical bridging emissary veins. So these are the cortical bridging emissary veins, which are the most common vessels to bleed. In a case of subdural hemorrhage, no issues with this. Anybody, but you treatment. If I talk about if the patient is asymptomatic, nothing has to be done. Observation. If the patient develops symptoms like headache, whatever, then I can go for osmotherapy by IV mannitol. Because in subdural hemorrhage, the patient does not come to me in active bleeding. Most of the times, the patient comes to me in chronic bleed. And chronic bleed, my IV mannitol can be given to the patient. Okay. And important is. Definitely. If you think that even after IV mannitol, the patient is still having features, or the hematoma is very big in size, more than 30 cc volume, then definitely I have to go for an evacuation by either a craniotomy or a burr hole surgery here also. No problem here. That's the important. Want a break? Ah, the people are sleeping in sleep. Don't drink water in the class.